He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. Floor unit, floor unit. Come at the interceptors. Get on the floor! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's on? <laughs> alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, standby. On target with their firearms unit. Keep your heart free to finish! In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. This is police interceptors. I cannot believe we get paid to do this. Yeah. Coming up, there oh, is. this is gonna go. A pursuit on a road to nowhere. It's gonna go down towards the dead end. It's gonna be the camp. It's the end of the line for a stolen motor. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off! Out the car. I'm break, I'm break on now! Get out. And don't walk off, fella. <laughs> An early morning runner gets nicked. Give me Peter, give me Peter, sorry. Sorry, sorry, but sorry. Get your hands behind oh, your sorry. back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Saturday night has just turned into Sunday morning. I said, just confirm uh, Toyota Starla and give us the wrench again. Interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom are out looking for a car which has been linked to a couple of thefts earlier in the evening. There's a, a Toyota Starlet which has hit cameras in the local area. So hopefully we can drop on it and get them locked up. 17-year veteran Ben is a big fan of all 80s music. And he knows that getting hold of villains is often like Kylie's hit song, a case of, I should be so lucky. Take your gamble, you buy a lot of ticket, you take your chance. So I do think you make your own luck in a way, but I also think if you're out there trying, it'll look favourable upon you. And Lady Luck does indeed seem to be smiling on our dynamic duo as they spot the starlet in a petrol station. Is that a Toyota starlet there? Is that Papa? Oh. But just as they pull in behind it, there oh, is. this is going to go. The driver spots them and speeds off from the petrol station. Next room we are three two. We enjoy what we to stop in Keithley on Hardings Road. The one litre Toyota is no match for Ben's 3 Series Beamer in terms of grunt, so the driver decides to use its size, squeezing in and out of traffic and then taking to the opposite lane. Yeah, speed is 5 at 0 miles an hour. It's a red Toyota Starlet. It's the weekend and the roads are busy, but that doesn't stop the driver taking the wrong side of the road once again before running a red light. Then he drives the wrong way up a one-way street. He's turned left, left, left onto the high street. But Ben knows exactly where he's going and heads him off. The Toyota's not getting away that easily. Yes, yes, train authorised. And super vehicle. Union Stop of Thornton. We're currently at South Street. Left in towards left, Woodhouse. Left in towards Woodhouse Estate. Going to Woodhouse Estate. The car's heading towards a local estate. The driver could be looking to lose Ben in the maze of streets before bailing out. Current speed 3-0 on Woodhouse Road. It's going to go towards Still, Halifax right, Road. Right, right. But instead of driving into the estate, the Toyota takes off in the opposite direction and heads out of town. It's going to come out at Halifax Road, possibly. Five at zero miles an hour. The driver then takes to a cobbled country lane. 
Yes, yes, yes. Just turn left, left, left onto Hainsworth Lane. Goes over the top towards Cullingworth. Current speed is 30 miles an hour, 3 0. The car then dives down a dirt track. It's going to go down towards the dead end, and it's going to be a deep camp. Back towards uh, Woodhouse, left, please. Left, left, down towards um, Woodhouse. Bottle deep camp. The clouds of dust mean Ben can hardly see, and the bumpy track is giving his car a proper battering. This pursuit is getting out of control. Interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom have been involved in a pursuit with a car linked to a couple of thefts earlier in the evening. Failed to stop in Keithley on Hardings Road. The driver made a number of dangerous manoeuvres in the town centre. It's turned left, left, left onto the high street. But before heading out into the countryside... Yes, 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 just turn left, left, left onto Hainsworth Lane and driving down a dirt track... It's going to go down towards the dead end, and it's going to be a deep camp. ...ramping up the risk level to the max. They're going to get out and go down towards Woodhouse Estate. Yeah, I can't follow. If you follow. mean a camp, it's going to go down to Woodhouse Estate. They're going down the um, own name road. We're unable to follow down there, mate. It's just garrow ground out just there. Yeah, we can't follow, unfortunately. It's gone down the, um, the dirt track. The pursuit's over. The rough terrain would wreck the police car and it'll be difficult to catch the runners in the dark. Ben knows the area well and suspects they'll have ditched it up ahead. Right, mate, do you want to get out yeah. with a torch? Basically, that goes on for about 500 metres. Right. But I can't get the car down. Yeah, fine. Right, I'll go around the other way. All right. Matt disappears into the darkness while Ben uses his local knowledge and heads round to see if he can spot the runners. Where we've just pursued them, you won't know that exists unless you live in this local area. So that vehicle's probably either going to be abandoned or... Well, to be honest, it will be abandoned because I don't think you can get a car down there now it's that bad. This is where it comes out here. Matt's with the motor. It has been ditched and whoever was in it is long gone, along with the keys. Ben parks up and makes his way up the track. Can it be driven out or what's your thoughts? Yeah, there's no keys with it. It can't be driven out. You're right. Ben's been joined by local officer Sam. Uh, so a quick little car. Yeah, well, yeah, old style. That's brilliant. So you don't realise how bad this is until you're trying to drive down it. Now they need to get the Toyota moved. And with no keys, it's not going to be easy. See, the thing is, you're not going to get recovery down here, so we've got no. two options. We have a put steering lock and brake it and then roll it down. The recovery will have to come in the morning. Where we are now, there's, um, there's known criminals that live down the road in the bottom part of the area down there. If we leave the vehicle set where it is, they're going to come back for it. Um, and obviously it's going to be used in crime again. We have got it back, which is a good job all in all, but hopefully at Forensics might get something on the car and we'll go from there and try and apprehend an offender. Matt flexes his biceps and tries to break the steering lock, but notices a phone ringing in the footwell, probably left by one of the runners. Someone's phone's ringing. Hello. How are we doing? Aaron's phone? Aaron, what, Aaron who? Your nephew? What's his last name? Aaron's? Um, just by Woodhouse Road. Come and get... friends to meet you, and I'll uh, give it you back. The caller isn't keen to retrieve the phone, but he has given him some important intel. Just had a nice phone call to tell us that the phone in the car is um, Aaron. So, we some inquiries on that name, and um, we try to identify who he is, where he is, and also his friends who are in the car as well. But the first priority is to get the car shifted. And they'll need to break the steering lock, which is designed not to be easily budged. Squash player Matt is close to celebrating a decade on the force. Before that, he was a personal trainer. And the steering lock's giving him a good workout. Come on. Don't hurt yourself. It's only about an inch thick. 
You'll do it. Keep going. All right. Keep going. But Ben has a solution. It's not going off, is it? <laughs> it ain't going off, is it? That? What I'll do is I'll see if I can get Steve here with X5. He can pull it out. As manpower can't shift the steering wheel, he's hoping the horsepower of the police 4x4 will do the job. But first, they try a more basic tool. We need some sort of... Well, yeah. <laughs> How many traffic cops does it take to get a Toyota Stella out of woods? <laughs> Joking aside, they can't leave the car here in case the runners come back for it. I think if you tie it around this side, it's forcing it around. It's time for the X5. What's what happens. I know what's likely to happen. I think it'd be pretty, I would suggest. Go on, go on. There you go, stop. There you go, done. Ben's brainwave has done the job. The hard-to-shift motor is finally moving. <laughs> okay. Right, go on, get going. See, all they needed for a bit of thought. They've got all that muscle, but they don't have a there, do they? The Toyota's finally out of the woods and onto the back of a recovery truck. The steering's quite heavy. They may not have caught the people in it, but getting this old banger out of circulation is a good result for the team. If we didn't get that vehicle recovered tonight, it'll just be used in crime again. If they can't get it out from where it was up there, they just set it on fire. It become a danger to members of the public, so the best thing we've done is get it recovered and uh, we'll do some investigation and try and trace the drive. Despite examining the car and the phone in the footwell, they were unable to discover who was driving. No one was arrested in relation to the driving and theft offences. The car was later destroyed. The days of nicking a car by breaking into it and hot-wiring it are long gone. The most common way vehicles are stolen now is via Hanoi burglaries. Named after the first operation set up to target these burglars more than 15 years ago. Hanoi burglaries where people break into houses specifically to take the keys and take cars off driveways. It's big business at the moment. If they like them and they're fast cars and they think they might give us a run for our money in our cars, They'll keep them, put them on false plates and use them to commit further burglaries. So they can try and use them as essentially getaway cars. They will sell them as they come or they will, again, sell them on, but for parts. Clear left. Cheers. What car is it? Ford Fiesta. What colour is it? It's pub kicking out time and interceptors Chris Spencer and Kev Shaw are on the hunt for a car stolen in a Hanoi burglary which has hit several number plate recognition cameras. It's been seen like the other side of Bradford and we've been, we, I thought it's going away from us but now it's, it seems it's turned around it's going back towards us now. So we're going to try head it off at the pass down here, it's not too far away really. The police pair, Kevin Spenner, joined the force on the same day almost 16 years ago. Before then, motorbike and Rochdale FC loving Kev worked as the manager of a well-known supermarket. Whereas his partner, Chris, a.k.a. Spenner, who's a big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Sienna Miller, worked in road construction. And it's the road the stolen Fiesta might be on that's frustrating them tonight. Not that way. No Fiesta up there. Should we say it's gone there, 65? It's going to go back to Radford. They know where and when the stolen car's been seen. But despite that, the radio's gone quiet and the Fiesta seems to have vanished. There's only so much racing around you can do. We can drive really fast everywhere, but you're always, you're always playing catch up. And when you drive past two or three junctions, it's exponential the amount of the ways it could be gone. But then the stolen car pings another camera, a fair few miles away and just outside West Yorkshire. Just putting out the option cameras. I have to be in to win it early, it's a long way though. We're playing catch up again now. We're going to go visit North Yorkshire. See how those guys are doing. West Yorkshire shares a border with five different police forces, 
it's common practice to work together to nick villains. As Spedder and Kev approach the border, a North Yorkshire car has caught up with the elusive Fiesta. Yeah, we'll How far past Hubie are you? Half a mile. Yep, yeah, we're coming up to behind now. Oh, we're into Hubie now. Spedder and Kev are close to their colleague and soon join him behind the stolen Fiesta. Hello. Five zero to car two. Yeah, are you in any position to attempt to stop it? If you have two one, uh, how many units are there behind us? Five zero, we're behind you. Have we got a third vehicle close by? Uh, my intention is once we've got three vehicles together, we've uh, got a three car box on this vehicle uh, when the opportunity arises. Just approaching around about the eight six. They plan to stop the stolen car with a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC, where three police vehicles box in a car. So they'll have to wait for a third unit to catch up. This is where we kind of got to use some of the tactics that we get taught, just to minimise risk. I kind of want to just pull out and take his nose off, but I think I'll be told off for doing that. Thankfully, Spenner doesn't have to take any drastic action. Yeah, you're cleared to come and overtake now and join the, uh, the second vehicle. The third car soon catches up. 2 one yeah, North Yorkshire Apple Frost Frontier, would they have authorised him to stop? Okay, thank you. We're going to need 2-1 then, have we got all three vehicles together? Yeah, preemptive box, you go first, Steph. I'll go on to offside rear carrot back. It's time to T-pack. Looking clear now. Now, let's go, go, go. We'll get in front of you there. Turn your engine off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, out the car. I'll break on now. Yeah. Get out. Ain't got anything on you you shouldn't have. No. Whose car is it? Easy question. Whose car is it? Okay. Stop, stop. There's no injuries, no damage. It's been a textbook T-Pack. Yeah, the stolen motor's been stopped and they have the driver. Jump in. And the passenger. Whose car is it? Put your window up. Whose car is it? What's your name? Whose yeah. car is it? I've just been to the drive the You've just been what? The drive the All right. And you're banned as well? The yeah, action is an outstanding stolen. Right. You're under arrest, sir. I'm getting done first for stealing. You've been arrested. You've been arrested for stealing, haven't you? That sounds like someone someone who's stolen it, sir. West and North Yorkshire have combined forces and got the job done. So stolen car, false plates. It's that, 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 that's a great result. It's been stolen for a couple of months. Milado's pleading ignorance, but it's not the first time I've heard that. Taking it down to the police station now, and we'll see, we'll see what he's got to say. He ain't the brains of Britain, the lad. But when he says, oh, I ain't stolen it, mate, that's what a car thief would probably say. It's, it's a car thief's prerogative to lie. So, we'll see. The truth will come out. The car's believed to have been stolen via a Hanoi burglary. Kev checks the details. Yeah, can you just confirm, is it just uh, is it theft of motor vehicle or is it a burglary? Uh, showing as a burglary residential, so Hanoi. Right, you're under arrest on suspicion of burglary as well. And the contents of the car won't help his defence. Bear in mind, these lads are innocent. It's just what, what they say he's done, paid 100 quid to take it somewhere, obviously. I know whenever I go out in a stolen car, you always make sure you take your burglaring stuff with you. Everyone needs like your burglaring hat with its goggles on, it's all on there with gloves. So these guys are up to no good. It's, it's, it's a bit chilly time, but it ain't, it ain't balaclava and gloves weather, is it? Back at the Nick, Kev books in the driver. It's been a satisfying evening's work. The gentleman we've had, he's been arrested for burglary. Um, this vehicle's been taken from a burglary where people break into your house, nick your keys, and then make off with your car. So the car were on false place trying to avoid detection and we've found it and stopped it and got him. He's also shown as a disqualified driver until he's passed his driving test. He's never bothered taking a driving test, so he's been further arrested for disqualified driving. We joined this job to basically get stolen cars back, and tonight we've, we've done it. Another childhood dream ticked off the list. The driver couldn't be connected to the burglary, so the charges were dropped. 
However, he was charged with theft of a motor vehicle, disqualified driving and no insurance. He awaits his day in court. No further action was taken against the passenger. And Kev's delighted to get them off the road. Still to come. Hello. Hello. Can't be on swapping seats. Some front seat trading places. I'll be driving. No, you won't. I'll be. No, you won't. Not unless you've grown a beard. A dodgy driver tells some porkies. Where's the keys? The key. Yeah, no key. Don't walk off, fella. <laughs> and white van man nearly takes out the interceptors. You've come and drifted straight onto my carriage where you've actually nearly put me into concrete barrier. The number of uninsured vehicles seized by the cops is on the rise. Last year, over 140,000 of them were taken off the roads. The interceptors have a theory why people drive uninsured. Not insurance is a big thing, definitely, but it's a bit of a, a kind of a catch-22, isn't it? A lot of people can't afford the insurance, so they take the risk. If they get caught, the car gets taken off them and they'll risk a fine or a point, but that puts the premiums up in certain areas, which then puts it out of reach for even your average person. Might be twice as much the car's even worth, and, and people just can't afford that, so they, they just take the risk more and more. A new day is dawning, and as the early birds start to go about their business, interceptor Dan Robson and rookie Emily Walker are coming to the end of their night shift and are taking a trip round Emily's home turf. East Leeds never sleeps. Not so I've heard. Dan may not be an expert on East Leeds, but in his more than 15 years on the job, he's developed an eagle eye for dodgy drivers. And as they cruise through the residential streets of Hare Hills, he clocks a car making a swift right turn. Oh, Nino. That gets his wrong and radar twitching. And in the less than 15 seconds he takes to catch up, the driver's already out of the car. Hey, up, fella. Fella. Is it, your, is it your car? This one. Yeah, this one. No, my car. Right. Where's the keys? The key. Yeah. No key. I just watched you get out of the driver's seat. Don't walk off, fella. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I give you key, I give you key, sorry. Sorry, sorry, boss. Sorry. Get your hands behind oh, your sorry. back. Oh, sorry. What are you doing? Right. Oh. Get in the car. Get in the car. Oh, I give you key. Give me the key now. Yes, the key, Lee. Where's the key? He dropped it on the floor. The driver's trying to hide something. Dan's got a hunch what it might be. Have you got your licence with you? I know. You've got no licence, right. <clears throat> Why try and run? Why run? I don't know this time. Emily's also had a run of the car and driver's details through the police national computer. There's no insurance. Right, there's no trace of him on any system. Have you got any ID at all? Yes, I have the phone. Anything in the car? No. Sorry, darling. I'm not you, darling. Right, so he hasn't got any ID, so I'm just going to drive the car and follow um, Dan round to his home address to get his ID. The man lives just a few streets away. And once he's cuffed... Um, that's a problem, believe me. Well, you've well, tried to run away. Well. You've tried to run away already, so... He goes in and gets his passport. Two minutes. Yeah, but you have to take this one home, please. Right, hang on. Just wait here, she'll get it. Yeah, I'm waiting here, yeah? The Dawn driver's recently arrived in the UK from Romania, and his reticence in getting a driving licence has caused him big problems. Yeah, strange one, really. We're just um, knocking about around the Hare Hills area of Leeds and we see this car and looks like it's done a bit of a, a lucky left type manoeuvre. Doesn't want to speak to us. And as we've come around the corner, he's... Um, He's just getting out of the car and walking away from it. He obviously didn't want to speak to us. Um, and then he started to try and run. 
I don't like people that try and make me run. Um, and the reason being, it turns out he's got no licence for insurance, so I'm just going to do the paperwork now to report him and take the car off him. So uh, it'll take about five or ten minutes, but he'll have to walk to work, I'm afraid. You're going to be reported for driving without a licence or insurance. OK, we're taking the car. You're taking the car? Yeah. Now? Yeah. You can get the car back, but we're taking it now because you can't drive without a licence or insurance. This is a big problem. It is a big problem. Yeah. But it'd be an even bigger problem if you had a crash without a licence or insurance. No. Or, worse than that, if you had a crash and someone died, you'd be going to prison. And then it'd be a big problem, wouldn't it? Is that your wife in there or girlfriend? Yes. Who's going to put food on the table? It's serious. Okay. Only one time. It only takes one time though, doesn't it? You could drive to the end of the street and someone that's had too much to drink, someone drunk could walk out in front of you. You need to have a licence and you need to have insurance by law and you haven't got either. So that's why you're sat here now. All right. Once he's got his things out of the car... Happy you've got everything, yeah. The not-so-happy ex-driver walks to work. Poor lad. Come here for a better life, provide for his family. Yeah, fair play, but away his car. Do it legally. The man was later charged with driving with no licence or insurance and fined £1,053 and given eight points to be put on his licence once he gets one. His car wasn't recovered from the pound, so was destroyed. Dan's still not happy about his early morning exercise. Trying to run for something as simple as an old ox. Why bother? You know, you're not going to get locked up for it, so... A lot of people just hold their hands up and take it on the chin, but... he didn't want to, did he? But Emily's got a far more serious problem. I broke a nail. Broke a nail? Mm. Damn. Yeah, it happens quite regular, to be honest. You can't have nice nails in this job. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was all right. Just about. <laughs> it's Saturday night, and interceptors Wayne Hutchison and Carl Charlie Farley are on the lookout for a car allegedly involved in a hit and run. Someone just shouted up that there's been a couple of mopeds um, and a Corsa. Uh, Corsa's deliberately smashed yeah, into her uh, and then made off. They've got an idea where the car's heading, but the roads are empty. This car could be anywhere, couldn't it, up here? Yeah. Then they get an update. Yeah, that motorbike's just gone past me, um, Middleton, uh, Ring Road. God, that's miles away, it's right, yeah, down, to, it's right down there, isn't it? The car's been spotted by a colleague halfway across the county. Huddersfield Town and Peter K fan Wayne worked in banking before he became a cop 19 years ago. His partner Carl is also a big fan of the Lancastrian comic and was an electrician before joining the force. But they both know the roads like the backs of their hands. So they hit the motorway as it's the quickest route to the Corsa. Advanced driver Wayne's hitting almost 100 in the outside lane. But then... A van in the middle lane starts drifting into his path, nearly forcing him into the central reservation. Without Wayne's swift reactions and driving skills, this could have been a fatal collision. He's texting. Texting. Even though they're on their way to another job, they can't ignore the driver's actions and suspect he may have been distracted. We've just passed a, a van and it started to come onto our lane. So Wayne's had to swerve to avoid a collision. And as we've passed him, I've looked and he's, he's texting on his phone, messing about with his phone. This is me coming down here. Yeah. Is it, it? Wayne bangs on the sirens and this time the van driver does notice the police car and pulls over. Having narrowly avoided a serious smash, Carl's not in the best of moods. This fella's going to get a right earful. Come this side. Come this side. Thank you, WFR. 
It's not a good place to be. Just come and take a seat with us two minutes. And he seems unfazed by the situation. Just jump in, just need a quick Thank word you. with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're out of kit, mate. I'm sorry, it's just the. Uh, I'm just trying to get used to the bloody controls. It's an I've only had it. All right. It won't work out the controls. Right. So, what? So messing about with your phone or something? No, I wasn't messing about with my phone. You had it held up in front of you as we passed you? Not my phone, I didn't. Wayne's heard enough. Right, whether I do you that, whether, whether I prosecute you for your mobile phone or do you care, because I'll tell you what, listen to what I'm saying to you. I will do the talking, you will do the listening now. Yeah. I'm responding to an incident. I've been lane three of the motorway and I'm overtaking you. You've come and drifted straight onto my carriage where you've actually nearly put me into a concrete barrier. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've nearly had. Just bear with me. For 31 years, I'm not uh, I'm not um, some shithead or anything. I'm not saying that you are, but what I'm saying is you've nearly put me into the barrier. Uh, it was a genuine mistake. The driver's straight up denying he was on his phone, but Carl's not convinced. Where is your mobile phone? Mobile phones in the car. In the van. Whereabouts in the van? Okay. Just on the on the in the on the, the seat on the car. Carl finds a phone on the front seat. Things aren't looking good for the driver. On the seat next to. Seats what? Did you see on the seat? One on charge. It was just on the seat. Yeah, but it is on charge. It wasn't. It wasn't plugged in. No, I've not just unplugged that. Even though the phone was on the seat next to him, the man's insistent he wasn't using it. Well, I wasn't on the phone when you... Passed. You had something in your hand. Hopefully you've got it recorded. Got it recorded where you nearly put us into no, central I reservation. It, 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 Stick was a it, ticket on. I've gone for the light. Carl has a scan of the phone, but can't find any proof that the man was using it. So they're going to give him a ticket for driving without due care and attention. Be mindful if we're using the controls of the vehicle or whatever we're using while we're driving, we need to be concentrating on what we're doing, yeah? yeah. You... I've apologised, it was momentary thing. But that moment relapse of concentration could have killed me, could have killed you, my colleague or somebody else that's travelling behind us, OK? We've been messing with Summer. Um, he's adamant it wasn't his phone, but he had something in his hand, he was messing with Summer. And were it not for Wayne's skillful driving, the outcome could have been far worse. Wayne's had to swerve towards the concrete central reservation to avoid a collision with this. And it is a prime example. You need to be concentrating 110% on your driving when you're on motorway. That could have been nasty, that could have been naughty. If it have hit us, if it had come over any more and hit us, Wayne wouldn't have had anywhere to go, would have been in that barrier, and who knows. The van driver accepted to take a driver retraining course instead of going to court for driving without due care and attention. When I got him out, he were all smiles and got him. I'm, I'm thinking, what are you smiling at? He just nearly wiped us out. But yeah, it just shows the dangers, just that little lapse, that second lapse of concentration ends up like that. Can I have a moving one, please, at Bradford Road at uh, Brighouse, please. It's just before sunrise, and interceptor Tony Rouse is behind a suspicious motor with four people on board. Registered police. She is the only permitted driver. The car's registered to a woman who's the only person insured to drive it, and that's where the problem is. I've got a funny feeling that it were bloke driving it, wasn't it? We'll just pull it over and uh, I will light it up and see if it pulls over. This driver is clearly paying attention and pulls over. But as the car comes to a stop, two people in the front appear to be changing places. The passenger's moving over to the driver's seat. Hello. Hello. It's no good, can't be, it's no good swapping one. seats. <laughs> no, because you were driving, not her. I'll be driving. No, you won't. I'll be. No, you won't. Not unless you've grown a beard. The front seat twosome are sticking to their story that she was driving. Can we get out? Just uh, stay there a minute. Wait. Tony needs to ask some more questions, but with four people to deal with, he calls back up. Drivers have swapped seats. Um, comes back to uh, a female and male were driving. Uh, just go in a bit of a lift. There's only me here, this far in car. And reinforcements soon arrive in the form of Nick Priestley and Claire Gray. Hey up. 
since you're to the female, um, there's only a female on it. I don't know who she is yet, I ain't got that far. Um, but like I say, he were driving. Alex, come and take a seat with us. Nick takes the man off for a chat. He's still saying that he wasn't driving. Meanwhile, Claire's having a talk with the woman, who tells her a different tale. She says she were giving you a lesson. That's why you were driving it. Yes, 20 past five is a strange time to be giving a driving lesson, and there aren't any L plates on the Golf. But whatever was happening, the car's not going to be driven any further. I'll tell you what we'll do, then we'll seize it. No. We'll seize it. She knows that I've got insurance. No. Yeah. So. Well, I've, I've got keys at minute, so... Right. Yeah. Coolio. So the car's going to the pound, and the four people in it will have to find another way of getting home. Nick's got the fun job of delivering the news. Unfortunately, my love, your car's getting seized this evening. All right, I'll tell you why. I'll, ex I'll explain to you why. All right, the guy that's driving doesn't have any licence or insurance. You've allowed him to drive. OK, OK. So, well, there's, well, there's no way you can get it back. All right, but tonight it's getting seized. All right, because he doesn't have any insurance and he's been driving it. These guys at back have only got 100 yards to walk. There's a nice warm taxi rank over there. And you can join them if you want. Right, so if you're going to step out and then uh, we'll get some paperwork and you can get on your way. Despite Nick's suggestion, the backseat passengers seem keen on hanging around. I thought you were going to the taxi rank. It's probably recording you because you're acting like bloody idiots. Yep. Go that way, <laughs> taxi rank. <laughs> What's happening that with way? our friend then? What friend? That friend. In the car? Home, He's yeah. going soon. I have to go home. Yeah, that's all right. He's going soon. Come on, come and talk to my mate over here and he'll explain everything. I'm not going to the cellar, man. No. Jump in here. <laughs> Tony's work is good enough for me, so if he says they were driving, they were driving. The car's getting seized. He's been reported, and uh, everyone's happy apart from his two here. It's been an eventful end to Tony's night shift. See you later. Take care, let's yeah, you Take you. care. Well, we've seen this car drive past, and it's, uh, it's five o'clock in the morning, and it, there's four people in it, which straight away sort of arouses your suspicion. The female, um, although she was uh, at the backside in the driver's seat, uh, I think the legs and everything else were still in the passenger seat, so they were, they were in the process of swapping seats, basically. Um, so it was quite obvious to me. I've seen him driving. I'm, I'm quite happy that he was driving and that she's come up with some story because he's not insured and doesn't have a driving, uh, a driving license. The man was later reported for driving with no insurance. No action was taken against the woman in the car or the two backseat passengers. Coming up, a smashed up van. He has actually hit this. And a runaway driver. I believe you've been involved in an accident with your van. Is that right? Who reeks of booze. How much have you had to drink tonight, sir? Not a lot. Not a lot, OK. Turn your engine off. Over 70,000 people are caught drink driving each year. And as the officers that have to deal with the aftermath, most interceptors have zero tolerance of the offenders. Drink drivers really have absolutely no respect for the law. They drive on the road and put everybody else at danger. And it is a complete disregard for the law and disregard for anybody else's safety uh, as well as their own. Uh, and there's absolutely no excuse for it in my eyes. They are incredibly selfish and they will just do that without thought of anybody else. We see vehicle still there, take it. We see. It's Monday night, and interceptor Bob Hoyle and rookie Danny Mickey are on their way to a crash, allegedly involving a drunk driver. We're just going to report of a van that's crashing into some bollards in Elland. Uh, drivers potentially uh, been drinking. Veteran interceptor Bob's not far off celebrating a quarter century on the job. When he's not out on patrol, he likes nothing better than heading down to Valley Parade to watch the mighty Bradford City. We're on it now. Bollard's here. Oh, there, look. Just to finish that.
He and Danny arrived to find some busted bollards and a smashed up van, but no driver. Thankfully, there are some witnesses. Up that way. Walking? Yeah, he's got red t-shirt, grey beard and a black turban. He's got a craggy beard, he's fairly old, he's trapped, he's staggering everywhere, he can hardly right. stand up. Right. How long ago going up that way? Uh, about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes, he's about got a yellow lantern in his hand and a red t-shirt. Right, OK. All right. So, the driver's done a runner, or, according to the witness, a stagger. Ten minutes ago, Danny and Bob need to track him down. Ten minutes. We can go to Barry. Especially drunk. Come three, two steps forward, five back. Yeah. And a couple of minutes later... Oh, oh sir. <laughs> ...they catch up with the man fitting the description. Just want to make sure you're okay. Because I believe you've been involved in an accident with your van. Is that right? I'm not quite. You're not quite sure? Yeah. What have you got in your hands here? Can I just check? Is that the van key there? Yeah. We'll just uh, take all it. What's this? Like, oh, like a lot. Right. Are you, are you okay? Are you injured yourself? No, I'm not. Okay. Do you want to come and have a seat two minutes around here for me? Just come around yeah. here. Have you had something to drink tonight, alcohol wise? Just around this side. Just come around here. How much have you had to drink, sir? Just you have a little seat in there, my friend. Thank you. The man's fairly incoherent and reeks of booze. How much have you had to drink tonight, sir? Not a lot. Not a lot, OK. Do you want to tell me what's happened or where you're going now? I'm going home. You're going home? Is it your van? Yes. OK. Obviously, I, I can smell some alcohol in your breath, OK? Um, so I'm going to request a breath test from you, a roadside breath test. Have you given one of these before? I have. OK. But he won't be doing one here. It's working earlier on, won't it? Right. The breath test kit's on the blink. Given the man's behaviour and odour, Bob's got enough grounds to nick him on suspicion of drink driving. I can, I can obviously smell that alcohol, it's quite strong, and you, you look a little bit unfit, the way you're kind of walking, and from the witnesses, you seem to be staggering. Uh, we haven't got a breath kit, uh, which is working, so at this moment in time, I'm going to tell you that you're under arrest for being unfit to drive whilst under the influence of drink, OK? OK, so um, we've found the gentleman as described by uh, people back down there, but as you can see, it's clearly in drink. Um, his breath kit won't work in, so I've, uh, he's been arrested on suspicion of being unfit to drink. We'll take him to the police station where he can blow the machine and we'll find out how much alcohol's in his body. Returning to the scene of the crash, it's clear that the driver was lucky not to have added to the more than 9,000 people killed or injured on the UK's roads each year due to drink driving. He has actually hit this. Oh, he's still sturdy enough, but... He's right, but that's that's what has stopped him. Or else he'd have probably carried on going over the over the bollards, wouldn't he? Uh, they're only here to highlight the fact. It's a bit of a chicane to slow vehicles down, I think. Drink driving is, you know, a bit of a bugbear of mine. And this gentleman, he's, he's really drunk, isn't he? You know, staggering about. And like you say, I don't know where he's going, where he's been, but he's from Huddersfield, which is a good uh, nine, ten mile away. You know, he's lucky he has it. This come to a stop, and not like you say hit somebody else or, you know, kill somebody. Back at the nick, the man gets on the intoxilizer. Blah, 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 blah. Bit more, bit more, bit more. That's it. Well done. Stop. And gives the result Bob expected. OK, so you've blown 81. Well, it's near over twice the limit, isn't it? OK. The man was later convicted of drink driving. He was banned for 18 months and fined £525, including costs. Bob's nicked hundreds of drink drivers over the years and still can't understand why people do it. These people take them, the, the risks of drinking and driving and, well, it beggars belief, but, yeah, they get involved in these collisions, do they? And, well, I've not to say for that, really. I just don't know. They're, uh, yeah, mad. Brand new next Monday at 8, we join Chester's elite hunting Britain's worst drivers in motorway cops catching Britain's speeders. 
on a real nuclear sub, remaining vigilant is the only option. We join the brave crew of HMS Trenchant in submarine Life Under the Waves, brand new, next. Oh, police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. But neither... Police officer with the taser! ...do the cops. Battling on the front line... Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! ...are Nottingham's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers... Oh, oh God. Vehicle failing to stop. Specialists in entry and search. Oh, my word. There is multi-kilos of cannabis in here. Rapid response firearms officers. Oh, please! I'm not to see him now! Yes, I swear to God! And the crime-stopping force... Chains up now! ...of the dog unit. Stop it! Wherever the battle takes them... On the ground! ..they'll never back down. Save, save, save them! Because come at the hour... Yeah, it's unit two, we're underneath you now, Empath. ..come at the interceptors. Put it this way, mate. You level that gun at us, you would have got shot. Coming up... Ah, ah, ..in the jaws of Morse, the land shark. Ah, I don't strip him off skin! Don't get off, please! A bloke on an old roof throws a treacherous temper tantrum. Not coming down, so one you come up here, we can have it. Moment, and some tiles. Watch out. And skating on thin ice. Right. Right on the road. The Torval and Dean are bad guys. That's got contact again into Warren Hill Cross for a decamp. <laughs> The night's black and blue on the borders, as Lisa DeSantis and Bruce Arnold hunt a dodgy Ford Fiesta in the dark. A car that we think is on cloned plates um, has just been seen or activated a camera around the city. We're in the area. Yeah, we're in the area where it has been seen. Could be anywhere. We're just flooding the area. Flood the area and the bad guys usually wash up sooner or later. Guys, we've not spooked it. It's either getting in it, it's in the sh... ..on the floor In this case, it's sooner. Jim Carrington's clocked the Fiesta at a petrol station on the Notts Derbyshire border. And he's not the only one with eyes on the prize. The car and its occupants have been caught on the station's CCTV. Little do they know that units from both Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire are closing in. We are literally at that RA now. Do you want us to block it? Right, uh, I'm behind you. I'm behind you in the plane car. Let me help it. Just quickly. Come through, come through. As the Fiesta leaves the forecourt, it's got company. An unmarked Volvo is on its tail. Lisa and Bruce hang back in the marked X5. That's the car. To Derbyshire, we are behind the vehicle. We've got a plane car behind the vehicle on the RA. It's, uh, not one, not one. It's, it's, the, second it's the second, the second towards Orsworth. As Sunday drivers come between Lisa and her prey. Go. While up ahead, Mr Fiestas clocked his unmarked tail and failed to stop. There, look, got it in the distance. Some pursuits run and run, but this guy's already stacked it straight into a roundabout. Where I'm going, where I'm going. There, there, there. <laughs> Driver and passenger have legged it. Where have they gone? That way. Get it contained! 
Can we get a Derbyshire dog? It looks like they've gone cross country in a field adjacent to the road. Backups arrived and they moved to surround the area. The football club on that already there. They're in here. With the field contained, they need something to flush out the runaways. Derbyshire interceptors have just the thing. Not to be outdone by the neighbours, Knox Finest joined the party, Mark Haywood and police dog Morse. He's last seen down into this ditch here. Well, not even into the field, just down into the ditch. A dog handler team up spells double trouble for the bad guys. Team Derbyshire takes the field. Mark and Morse cover the canal path alongside. And word is one of the suspects has been spotted making for that very canal. Morse is onto someone. But is the lad in his jaws the lad they're after? <laughs> Interceptors are after two runaways from a suspected cloned Fiesta. They failed to stop. Crash. Stacked into a roundabout and legged it into the pitch black. Where are they go? That way. Get it contained. They're believed to have gone to ground in a muddy field. They're in here. But the dogs are out, and PD Morse has picked up a scent along the canal. Ah! Ah! Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah! Whoever it is, he picked the wrong opponent for hide and seek. Ah, yo! Ah, yo, it's ripping my skin! Yo, get off, please! Morse is a master seeker with massive teeth. Ah! 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 Yeah, I'll I've got him. Ah! 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 Morse seems to like him. But the feeling clearly is a mutual. Come down the canal, pal. I killed that little boy. He's never got bit by the dog. Backup arrives. Go on out there, mate. It's a bit of a prickly situation. What's your name? He's been bit on his right leg. Kneel down. Kneel down. The lad's going in cuffs. Ah, uh, my leg's bleeding, boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yo. Is that it? Yo, it's stinking. Are you mad? Is that it? Come on, man. Patting up. That's blood, isn't it? No, that's like a cat scratch. Is there no blood? No. Morse has left an impression, but it's not serious. Oh, that's stinging. That is some lethal business. And the lad seems keen on a post-chase interview. No, I did. I thought I was blending it, yeah, and then I had seen the dog, and then I just felt some biting, and then it went... I thought, oh, shit, I f***ed it. I thought I smoked it, I can't lie, like... I was running over bare fields, I thought I got away. Despite a thorough search, the other occupant of the car seems to have slipped the net, so there won't be any seconds for Morse this time. Don't no, man, I just come to the You're all right? Yeah. Yeah? Yo, that dog's lethal shit, you know. Where was you, man? I was next to him. It seems the suspect is a familiar face. All right. Oh, what's popping, mate? I remember you. Do you have a nice little run out yeah. from your stolen car? It's not stolen, man. Is it not? Have you done a VIN check yet? Well, I might fancy all the other oh, stolen so you, cars. So you know the car run about then? I don't know, nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> he denies being in the car and cops are desperate to prove he was. Yeah, we've been after him for a while, to be fair. He's, there's, there's, there's a good intelligence picture around him being a decent car key burger and nicking sort of high-value, decent German cars, Beamers and Audis. We've been after him for a while. He's been flicking in and out of cars on false plates. So, yeah, really, really good results to lock him up. No one claimed ownership of the Fiesta, so it was later destroyed. However, this time, due to evidential difficulties, no further action was taken.
But a few weeks later... Yeah, our priority, please. Vehicle's now making off from us. It's uh, Leepool Island. The boy from the bush is believed to be back on the road in a suspected stolen mini that's failed to stop on treacherous icy roads. But it's the first, the first, still A60 now, in towards Arnold. Yeah, it's medium due to the speed of the vehicle, but traffic is light. Despite the roads being like an ice rink, the Mini is maxing it at over 80 miles an hour. It's uh, underneath Arch Hill, descending the hill generally towards Arnold, it's still failing to stop. The cops suspect that both occupants have been up to no good, and they're determined to collar them before someone gets hurt. The R8 is medium, it's uh, approaching the lights for Mellors Road, it's through on red. Still A60 inbound. The road conditions are hazardous, but the cops are in a high-performance X5 and trained to drive on the snow and ice. DRA remains medium due to speed of 8-0. Whereas this guy's driving is worse than the weather. Passing the cemetery to the offside, approaching the traffic lights with Cross Street. And it's wrong side of the road and wrong side of the road again for a Right, 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 onto Oxglose Lane. Right the road. The driver is prepared to do anything to escape as he nearly takes out the police car. The ERA is uh, medium, due to it being wrong side of the road, but traffic is light. The driver is a white male with dark, cropped hair. They need to get these guys stopped before they kill someone. Left, 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 Roundwood Road. We are a medium. The road conditions quite slippery up here. We are a medium. The runaways are on thin ice, and with freedom slipping away, they prepare to bail out. And it's uh, right, right, right onto Warren Hill. Close. Tactical contact. Tactical contact again into Warren Hill Close for a decam. They're both out to the driver's side, leaving the Mini to slam into a parked car. They're out and running down towards. Well, there's no dark field for cover this time, and they've left a handy trail of footprints in the snow. They're up, they're up, up, up over the playground. Someone's hiding between the houses, and it's not Frosty the Snowman. Oh, we're out, we're out, we're out. Get out! We're out, we're out. Get, Get on the floor! <laughs> Your nick, mate. Judy T. They've also got his buddy, who appears to be the same lad Morse found in the bush. I'm only his old. Well known I'm only years old. This colour's especially sweet and it's a miracle no one got hurt. <laughs> the Mini was completely out of control, nearly hitting a bloke walking his dog. Tactical contact again into Warren Hill Close for a decamp. This slippery pair risked their lives to escape, but had a snowball's chance in hell. So these officers are abusing a young kid. I'm only is old. Well -known I'm only... The driver is awaiting a charging decision for dangerous driving. No action was taken against the lad, who ended up in the jaws of Morse. You can get off. Oi! Oi! Get off! Get off the bro! Get off! Hey, I'll you on the floor! On the floor! Larry customers on the ground can be difficult enough to deal with. Get off! Get off! But when they take to the rooftops with their grievances. They reach a whole new level of grief. So when we get people that go on the roof either trying to escape or potentially trying to arm themselves, it becomes quite a difficult situation. We've had it previously where they've had um, used the tiles as missiles, um, used other implements, such as we had one where we'd where we uh, had two lads go on a roof a couple of years ago and they even pushed the chimney stack over uh, and tried to push that onto police officers. Obviously, that's hundreds of bricks 
They were using bricks as missiles. They, they did cause a huge amount of damage to people's property. They wrote off cars. They just spent several hours targeting police officers by chucking bricks at them. Uh, they ultimately, negotiators were used, and they um, came down for a bucket of uh, KFC, I think it was, if I remember right. She might not be armed with fried chicken, but Jen Els does have a very persuasive dog called Quantum. They're en route to Mansfield to help with a high-pressure situation. It's a siege that's been going on, I think, for an hour or so. Um, a male, I think, that thought he was wanted. We've checked and we don't think he's wanted, but he's gone up on a roof and is throwing objects off the roof at cops, uh, damaging houses, damaging cars, and just causing, basically, mayhem. The drone team has eyes on the bloke who scaled an old bus depot and is making unauthorised alterations to the roof. Causing a lot of damage, I think, by the size of it. They arrive on scene. <laughs> Where is he? Diagonally across from the building. Right. I think there's a dog man on the there side. Is, he's here, yeah. Jen and Quantum's role will be to apprehend the high flyer if he makes a break for it on the ground. But he's going nowhere, and there's been an alarming development. Yeah, it's threatening to set fire. The suspects threaten to set the building ablaze which, considering he's on it, isn't the brightest idea. And, worryingly, he's now disappeared from sight. After a tense couple of minutes, mercifully without smoke, he's back on the tiles for a life-threatening stroll. More than 40 feet above the ground, one slip on a loose slate could be. But he's got his own plans for loose slates, and they're not good. Broken windscreens can be repaired. But now he switches his aim from cars to coppers. I'm good shot, you know. An object thrown from this height could kill someone. Has he managed that? Just hurling stuff like he pinged off the trees into the van. The rowdy roofer's arming himself with some seriously hefty masonry. I'll stand it. Watch out. Fortunately, it's another near miss. However, the man's behaviour is increasingly erratic. I'm fine. Get up here. Negotiators are on scene and are trying to persuade him down. But they're not having much luck. He now picks a fight with around 20 cops. Any one of you? Biggest one, smallest one, whichever. Could have knocked him out. Dead off. Right to take his head off. He's now been up there for over three hours and doesn't show any signs of tiring. So they decide to move in by entering a neighbouring property to get access to the roof. Bring that red key anew. Red key anew. But he's seen them coming. Right, lads. Let's get 
It looks like he's cut his hand, most likely ripping up roof tiles to throw at the cops below. The police's priority is his well-being, despite his continued threats towards them. He might be special, but his bleeding hand is causing concern. This is my barrister. <laughs> In a bid to appeal to his better nature, one of the negotiators throws up a bandage. Luckily, his catching is better than his attitude. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm the siege is now entering its fourth hour and it's been a significant police response. It's a lot of cost to, to the public, isn't it? Taxpayers' money. There's, there's quite a few police officers here. There's uh, specialist officers that are there to enforce and go in with shields and helmets. So you've got, I think you've got two teams of those. You did have two dogs, now one dog. Helicopter's been a drone. It's incredibly expensive. Yeah, it's just a matter of waiting it out. And five hours after he went up, the negotiators finally persuade him down. It's been a great team effort, and the suspect escaped only with a minor injury, which is more than can be said for the destruction he's left on the streets. The roof wrecker was found guilty of criminal damage, of fray and failing to surrender. He was handed a 20-month prison sentence, suspended for two years. He's just gobbed it. Still to come. Oh, my God, you must. The knife crime team... You don't be silly enough to swallow a load of drugs. ...find a lad's behaviour hard to swallow. Hey, it was good. What is the view on about, mate? It's Hunt the Quad in Newark. Uh. Quad, just uh, done a red light on the wrong side of the road. And bad news in the bedroom. Got some right weight to it. After some recent drug-related fatalities in Nottingham, the knife crime team has been tasked with targeting users and dealers. Sergeant Matt Daly and Dan Mottishaw are out in Radford, where the team have two suspected drug users under observation. Gav has seen uh, two people, a male and a female, um, who seem to be on a little bit of a mission, the way they're walking. Uh, I'm just coming up to the Tesco's now, Gav. Uh, he suspects yep, that they the might be right. going to try and score some drugs and on I think it was Tuesday of this week we had a drug dealer stopped in the area where they're approaching now on that particular occasion uh, it had no drugs on him and it's clear that he had just dealt so we're hoping to have another bite at the cherry Plainclothes cops have eyes on the suspect pair just around the corner. They're monitoring at the side. I'll see them when they come back out. Yeah, 10 Obviously, they're probably going to be users and we've got the dealer. The female has been spotted quickly entering and leaving a property. The just walked out the house and then passed him something. She's passed a small package to the bloke and the pair are on the move. So are the team. Just turning it now. He's just gobbed it. Eagle-eyed Dan spots the lad, puts something in his mouth. And it doesn't look like a lollipop. No, man. No, man. Stay there for us, brother. Get it out stay, there. stay there, stay there. Get it out. Don't let him swallow it. Get it out your oh, mouth. Oh, yo, get off him, man. No, allow it. We're trying to help him. Get it out don't your don't mouth. Him to swallow anything. Mate, if, if What's you your name, swallow love? it. Just stand. No, 
You're going to need a doctor if you swallow it. Get it out your mouth. Don't swallow a load of drugs. Don't swallow a load of drugs. Whatever's in his gob, he's not keen on sharing. Get it out your mouth. Oh my God! Get off him, lad! Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. You mad? Out your mouth, mate. Stay there, but you got to shut up. Don't be silly enough to swallow a load of drugs. Despite best efforts, he's trying to swallow suspected cannabis, and he's pleased with himself. Free man, lad! Ain't got a chance here. Ain't got no drugs. What the drugs are you on about, mate? Right. What the drugs are you on about? He's going to need searching anyway. What the drugs are you on about? Drugs? Yeah, yeah it's fine, mate. <laughs> you look a funny man. Unfortunately, they can't search his stomach, but they'll give him the once over. You look just causing a scene, man. I ain't got nothing on me in it. So you may as well just let me walk. Still ruined your day, though, isn't it? And he's clean on the outside, but the primary concern is for his health. My advice is that you take yourself to hospital, all right? Stop my feet. <laughs> no high for you pair today, is there? See ya. Knife Crime Team Sergeant Matt's a big U2 fan, and he still hasn't found what he's looking for. And the team's focus switches to the suspected dealer. What do you want to do? Go around? Yeah. Well, she's been in there. We can confirm it, can't we? We've got enough suspicion. Yeah. It's time for a surprise house call at the address from which the lad and friend emerged. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the only way Gav to... gets straight to the point. Right, I'm going to keep this dead simple, OK? We have some suspicion that somebody at this address has just supplied a male and a female with some canvas. Yeah. Have you got any drugs in here? No, no, no. Not really. OK, I'm in time. You're under arrest and suspicion of being concerned in the supply of <laughs> canvas. You don't have to say because it may harm friends. Don't mention one question. Something which later I report. Anything you do say, may give me evidence. He's denied having any drugs, but then they always do. Yeah, if there's a bit of something, just uh, instead of if, you know, if there is something here, rather just just find it's a, like ripping yeah, everything yeah, apart. The only thing what you would find is probably my grind or ash tree. That's it. Yeah, but that isn't it. This uh, shoebox was just down here on the floor. Just opened it up and there's a couple of bags of wind in here, canvas. Probably a half ounce right there, 14 grams, and then uh, an ounce right there. Gav also finds a nasty looking weapon. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a day item you keep in the bedroom. It's not particularly sharp, but it's still going to cause a serious injury, death if someone stabs you in. Aladdin's blade isn't the only knife in the house. It's what you normally keep in your bed, isn't it? Safest place to keep it. But there's an even more disturbing discovery. Well, an imitation firearm, for all intents and purposes. Um, hidden in a shoebox, as, as you would expect. It's got some right weight to it. I think it's going to be a pellet gun, gas-powered pellet gun. Um, there's going to be no good reason for why he's got it. The team also finds some scales. But with only around an ounce of cannabis found, it will be a possession rather than a dealing charge. Um, someone's going to need a quick interview for possession of cannabis. Who's that going to be? Yeah. You. Yeah. It's still a good result for the knife crime team, with drugs confiscated and weapons seized. No, you don't cut your fruit and veg with it. I'm not convinced it's going to be put to any good use in their possession, so it'll come away with us. Our statistics show that Actually, those that carry knives for self-protection are far more likely to be injured or injure someone else carrying knives than those that just don't carry in the first place. You know, some of it is sort of education, but we have a lot of slow learners. The young lad in the house was given a cannabis warning. No further action was taken in respect to the lady in the house.
Quads and motorbikes are an increasing nuisance for the interceptors. They're tricky to pursue and there's an inherent danger as riders are often completely unprotected. They get used in general antisocial behaviour on the road where people are just flying around on them. Um, and they do quite often get used by criminals when they're out committing offences. I think they're handy for them because they're also small enough to duck down alleyways and walkways that we just can't get down in cars. You know, if someone's making off from us on a quad bike, we'll, we'll go after it, but then ultimately it's a decision for the bosses to make as to whether we are going to pursue it or not. It's just a handy little tactic for them to get away. We've got a red quad bike on Lover's Lane. Um, up to its side that uh, previously failed to stop for officers and it's done the same again tonight. We've got no VRM able to travel that area. In the unmarked X5 and looking to end this quad riders joyride this evening are Paul Charlesworth and Rich Elliott. At the minute we're looking for a, a red quad in the Newark area. It's driving in uh, quite an antisocial manner. Two riders on it, neither of which have got a helmet and we're more concerned really for their safety at the minute. Unlike them, who are breaking every rule of the road. Right. There they are. That quad has just uh, done a red light on the wrong side of the road on London Road and uh, we're in an unmarked car. Due to the risks involved, the team can't follow until tactics are authorised from control. Good. Can we ask for preemptive yeah, stinger on this quad? It's gone wrong side of the road through a red. I mean, it could end up in RTC just at, without driving already. Go ahead. Across town and keeping ears on the job are Sergeant Jim and Lisa DeSantis. Stinger would be an option, wouldn't it? Finally, control gives the green light. So preemptive stinger and tactics around T-Pack is authorised. So um, we can set up on it and potentially put a stinger on it in order to uh, slow the vehicle down, bring it to a conclusion. Meanwhile, Paul and Rich... So we're going to try and plot up and sting it if we can. ...need to predict where their rogue quad is going. But the two times we've seen it, it could have easily been going back towards Tony Lane and it's not bothered, it's just thrashing it around for the sake of it. Cover from that line. With the quad seemingly on a mindless joyride, they make an educated guess. We'll spin around and get a stinger set up, set up in the town centre. Before they can spin round, the joyride comes their way. He says, come back, it's coming back. Back towards us now, mate. They may have missed the chance to sting it. Uh, back to the roundabout, towards you. But there are other dogs in this fight. Paul marshals the team to set stingers along the quad's likely route. We've just arrived at the top. We've gone from the uh, Castlegate uh, area. Got to stinger out from the arm mark, can't Yeah. It's only a quad and it's not going yeah, to go through well, the car. Yeah, well, I've got the path here if it comes down here. With the X5 blocking the footpath across the bridge, they set up a spiky surprise. Rich is an ex-intelligence analyst who's new to the team and yet to pop his stinger cherry. He's hoping to open his account with a quad. But it's not to be. The riders have been spotted ditching the quad in some woods nearby. There's a runner, I think it's been decamped camped in the woodlands, runner towards Tony Lane, uh, back towards where the OS, OS officers are on Trent Bridge. It's now a foot race in the woods, with cops hot on the heels of one of the suspects. Continuing across that bridge. Yeah. As Rich and Paul race to intercept, okay. Lisa and Jim are zeroing in on the chase. Yeah, he's down here. Keep going, keep going. I know where the bridge is. Yeah, down here. Yeah, we're done. They're just in time. We're gonna. Oh. He's just past us. Other interceptors are close by. His 
joyride and fun run are over. We've got to time. <laughs> but he denies being the rider. I don't like liars. CCTV's watched you. Several police officers have watched you. Don't take me for an idiot. No, I'm not taking you for an idiot. Okay. Jim gives him a piece of his mind. Mate, riding quads like that kills people. Our uh, busies around here with pedestrians and kids at the weekend. I fully understand, mate. Yeah, that's how people die, mate. It's people like us that have to come and scoop up people's brains off the roads. Mate, I'm only, please don't scream and shout me, please. I'm just asking nicely. I understand what I've done. You're asking wrong. nicely now I what after I've done riding a quad like that. I understand what I've done. I'm not wrong. interested, mate. As Paul arrives, the lad's led off, but he's made his mark. He's run so hard, uh, he's been sick on the floor. Uh, he's a teenager. Yeah, we're just thinking riding around like an idiot. He's just got no sense of consequences, I don't think, because um, anyone with any rational thought wouldn't just go through a red light on a quad bike uh, and risk their own life. So the fact he's 16 probably contributes to the fact, uh, to the nature of how he's riding, because he just doesn't, doesn't recognise the consequence of what he's doing. Um, hopefully he'll learn a little bit and maybe think twice about it next time. With the menace off the road, it falls to Rich to recover the abandoned quad from the woods. So at least we've got the quad, we've got the rider, so it's uh, a good result, really. Um, I'm sure it won't be uh, insured. They're not really designed for the roads and the speeds he was doing. This is a, it's a farm vehicle. It's made to be, um, you know, driven sensibly around farms, sorting out animals and livestock. What he was using it for was just ridiculous, really. He's only going to hurt himself, and he had no concept of danger. He was going through red lights. Wrong way around roundabout, it was just um, completely reckless and dangerous. The teenager with the weak stomach was charged with owning a false driver's licence, but received no further court action. Still to come. Does your dad know you got a car? No. Dad's the word for a young driver who doesn't have a driving licence. Reckless youngsters without driving licenses are accidents waiting to happen. High risk, high risk, high risk. With a lethal combination of overconfidence and inexperience. Crash, crash, crash. Get ready to get out. From a police perspective, a lot of the young drivers that we deal with have got no real uh, consideration for experience. Those that do have a licence think they're Lewis Hamilton, but it is, uh, yeah, it is certainly a, an increasing problem for us all. It's a warm afternoon as Phil Broughton starts a sunny shift in the Mark V series. But a cloud soon falls over proceedings in the form of a Mercedes compressor that's four up. The Merc was motoring. Quick. Time for a chat. Hello, how are you? Thank you. Yeah, good, thank you. Just turn your ignition off for us a sec. There we go. Is it your vehicle? My dad's. She does, is it? OK. The reason why I want to have a chat with you is how you're coming up Glenside. You're going a bit too quick. Yeah, yeah. I've had, like, 35 miles per hour, that's it. 35 miles an hour, yeah, but it's a 30-mile-an-hour limit. <laughs> OK. It's not often you get a driver who grasses himself up for speeding. Are you sure to drive it? Uh, no. I've got an L-driving licence. Oh, what, sorry? I've got L driving license. You've got provisional, have you? Yeah, yeah. All ah, right, no worries. Right, do you want to step out for us? Have you got your licence on you? Oh, no. 
No. All right, just step out for us. I haven't got anything. You got a license? No. You want me to be 15? Come on, man. It's 15. How old are you? 15. I'm 16 and a half. Right. OK, then. So, ultimately, then... He claims to have a provisional, but he's too young to hold one. And there's another issue closer to home. The question is, does your dad know you got a car? No. All right. OK, where's your my key? My dad doesn't know. He doesn't know you got it? No. Take a seat oh, to my car. My dad is going to kill me now. He told you not to drive it, so you did? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm going to be dead. With road traffic accidents being the main cause of death in young people aged between 15 to 29, it's a good job Phil stopped him. In no trace on a PNC name check or a PNC DL check. Are you sure you got a provisional? Are you applied for a provisional licence? I was applied, yeah. Oh, you haven't applied yet? No. No licence, no insurance. Your application may be delayed after today. The offences you've committed driving-wise, it's highly likely you're going to be uh, disqualified from driving for a period of time. He could be in further trouble. Just for info, uh, I've got a 16-year-old son who's taken Dad's car. I just need to make contact with Dad. Uh, it might be a case that he's not aware that he's taken it. If Dad hasn't given him permission, he could also be facing taking a vehicle without consent. Dad's English OK? It's not. Oh. I can ring him and talk. I'll, I'm, I'm going to try and ring him now. We'll see where we get, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. All right? This could be one awkward phone call for the lad. Hello, Zach. Hello, it's PC Broughton from Nottinghamshire Police. I'm currently with your son. What's up with him? Um, why is he out in your Mercedes? Has he got permission to drive it? Has he got permission to drive your Mercedes? No. OK. Oh, dear. The dad's on his way down to collect the car, but this is a family reunion the son isn't exactly looking forward to. I'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. No worries. Bye-bye. I can't believe you can't, you can't realise what you've done is wrong. The fact is you're driving around with a load of kids in the car. You can't drive, you ain't got a licence. How do you think it's going to end? Fortunately, this time no one's been hurt and Phil's a copper who always seeks the positive. Thing is, though, I'm hoping at least after this you won't do it again. I won't. Good. 30% is just because, like, police in that, but trust me, 70 is just because my dad. <laughs> and he's 100% going to be grounded as his dad arrives. Obviously, he shouldn't be driving. We all know he's driving. He ain't got a license. He's got no insurance, and he's got uh, three of his mates in the car as well that has been driving around. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I take he's not got permission to drive it. No. 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 no all right. No, no. But he needs to be interviewed regarding some offences. So taking the vehicle without your consent, so without your knowledge, driving otherwise in accordance with a license, and driving without insurance. But I need to do that with an inappropriate adult at a convenient time. So I'm going to get his friends out of the car, unless you want to drop them off home. Ah, that, OK, no problem. Are you happy to drop them off? Yeah. Right. Cool. Right, bear in mind what we've said and don't do anything like that again. All right? Come on, man. It's fair to say he probably won't. Thank you, thank you so much. No worries, no problem. Uh, maybe something, uh, uh, something uh, big problem. That's it, yeah, we've stopped it before happening. This, this is... Thank you so much. <laughs> Not a so problem. Much. All right, have Thank a good day. You. I appreciate it. All right, no Thank worries. So Not a problem. Have a easy day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a lesson learned, and there's one thing left for the lad to do. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Like I said, as long as it doesn't happen again, as long as we learn from it, cracking. I mean... Yeah, I mean, like I say, he's got no training on how to drive a car or whatever. He might think he can drive a car, but he's not passed a test. Um, I just don't think he's got an idea of the consequences behind it. So um, he'll be egged on by his friends or what have you, out and about. They think it's a joke until something happens in front of him just, and they can't react to it. No charges were brought for taking a vehicle without consent. He'll either wait to stay in court for driving without insurance or a licence.
join Tony Robinson on an after hours behind the scenes tour of Greenwich's Royal Observatory in the Thames at night, brand new Friday at 8. The countdown clock has reached zero and the attack on Pearl Harbor is imminent. 30 minutes of hell relives the devastation, brand new next. Crime never sleeps. But neither do the cops. Battling on the front line are Nottingham's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers. Contact. Oh, God. Vehicle failing. Stop. Specialists in entry and search. Rapid response firearms officers. Do not move! Get into the dog! Get down on the floor! And the crime stopping force get him up, we get him up, we of the dog unit. Stop struggling! Wherever the battle takes them, oh, they'll never back down. Calm down! Because come at the hour. Get down on the floor. Come at the interceptors. Oi, it's a good day at the office. Coming up. Mate's gone wrong side. Wrong lane runaway. A T pack in the overtaking lane turns a bit hairy. Is there a lot of damage or? Yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah, a lot of damage to fix. And a weed farm bust spells good news for Lee. It's a bad day for someone. It's Saturday night in Nottingham. The glad rags are on, the lads are about, and the city looks lively. It's also happy hour for the criminal classes, as interceptors kindly know full well. You know, you're opportunist thieves. Uh, if they know that people are out or visiting friends, they might be breaking into cars, breaking into houses. And obviously from those you get cars getting nicked as well with car key burglaries. It's not long before an ANPR camera picks up a stolen black Renault Kajar in the north of the city. Kai's got a hunch as to where it's heading and his instinct is spot on. That's, that's it. The driver's clocked the X5 and taken off like a bandit. Kaja go go. It is failing to start. Speed is 7-0. Red ATS, it is braking and it's Signalling right, 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 Mansfield Road towards Goose Fair Island. The driver might still be indicating, but his next move is less highway code, more code red. Mate, he's gone wrong side. Yeah, that's right. The Renault with three on board is booting it the wrong way at nearly a ton. It's medium risk uh, at the moment. With little oncoming traffic, the pursuit is deemed safe to continue. Speed is 7-0. Very light traffic. Wrong side again. If he plans to get the pursuit abandoned, he's picked the wrong night. Nothing on the road, mate. There is barely any traffic on the road. Uh, still continues 8-0. Uh, and on roads this quiet, there's nowhere to hide from the interceptors. 860 outbound. Yeah, 860 outbound. We're just passing uh, Woodthorpe Drive to the offside. This driver is an accident waiting to happen. He's taking major risks. It's clipped to curb. It's clipped to curb. With possibly damaged wheels, he loses control. Here we go. And heads straight into a lamppost. The passengers are off, but Lee only has eyes for the driver. Driver's out. Back of the metal pump. With Thackeray's lane, we're into the park to the left-hand side. After one hell of a smash, the driver's somehow vanished. But eagle-eyed Kai got a good look at him. 
black nail, black bandana, black clothing. Where's he gone? Oh, she's gone to ground. If it's hide and seek he wants, then let the game begin. Coming, ready or not. Can someone join us in this park? I think he's gone to ground. I do, guys. He didn't come out at all. With other units now surrounding the park, it's just a matter of flushing him out. Do you want to just grab my dog going there, just make sure that's completely contained. But they keep the dog on the lead because it's all kicking off at the top of the park. Stay there. Stay there. Kai's off like a shot, over the bridge and far away. To find Rob's grappled a guy to the ground. Yeah, that's him. It's their man. You're under arrest on suspicion of dangerous driving. Left a motor vehicle and then stopped the police. <clears throat> you don't have to say anything, I'm defence if you don't mention it. When questions sweet close running call. The driver's in cuffs. Can we bag him as well because he stinks of ale? But the passengers have slipped the net for now. One in a burgundy red t-shirt. The other one was just in uh, black. They'll comb the area for runaways. While Bandana Man, who smells of booze, needs a breath test. So this is a breath box? Yeah. But suddenly the driver takes a turn for the worse. What's wrong with you? You all right? Having crashed into a lamppost, the guy now appears to have passed out. He's struggling to breathe and needs urgent medical help. It is failing to start. Speed is 7-0. Kai and Lee are dealing with the driver of a stolen Renault. Mate, he's gone wrong side. Yeah, that's right. The suspects tried his hardest to shake off the cops. Two crash. Before yep. stacking into a lamppost. Driver's out. Somehow he's legged it. Stay there. But be nicked hiding in the park. You're under arrest on suspicion of dangerous driving. Left a motor vehicle and then stopped the police. Before they can breath test him. So if this is a breath box. Yeah. He appears to have passed out. What's wrong with you? You all right? You having some sort of seizure or just shaking because you're cold? Can you hear us, mate? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Got a pulse and he's breathing. <sighs> Good, sit up, get some fresh air. There we go. Fortunately for the lad, Kai and Lee are advanced first aiders. I'm going to lie him down in the recovery position. If he can't breathe. If he can't Mate, breathe. Get a nasal tube, I'll put one in him if yeah. he's starting to have breathing issues. Yeah. Has he got any medi bracelets? No, can't say anything like that. I've checked him top to toe, he's got no other injuries at all. He's not bleeding from anywhere. He's got a strong pulse, although yeah. his airway is gargling. They need to ensure he's getting sufficient airflow to his lungs. We're going to stick a tube in your nose to help you breathe. Just checking the airway. There's no obstructions and they're clear. While the nasal tube helps breathing, it's not built for comfort. Oh, there we go. Oh, what's oh, the, oh no, you're, you're all right. We'll just pat Just making sure you that's can gonna, breathe. That's going to help you breathe, my friend. Take some deep breaths. There we go. It looks like he's going to make it. Just to update you, uh, Aditane male's become unresponsive. Uh, we're administering first aid. We've cleared his airway with a nasal tube and he's now uh, on oxygen. An ambulance arrives to take over medical duties. Otherwise, all his numbers are spot on. Right. Leaving the boys able to return to the crash site. He's clipped a curb back there at uh, some speed and he's obviously done the front 
and the back wheel, so on, on this near side. I think fortunately for him, he's hit the, uh, the traffic post and not the wall beyond it. With Kai and Lee's pursuit and medical know-how, it's been a job well done. And the Renault, albeit damaged, is heading home. I think it is reassuring for the public to know that, you know, we, we do capture stolen cars. And we don't just get the cars, we actually get the drivers as well. Um, at times, we might not be uh, youngsters in trainers, but, uh, but we still manage to get them. Bandana Man made a full recovery. He was later found guilty of aggravated vehicle taking, dangerous driving, no insurance and driving without a full licence. He was sentenced to 14 months behind bars. Phil Mitchell. <laughs> Dealing with rowdy groups is par for the course for the interceptors. But they're well aware that loudmouths often sound off to distract cops from something suspect. Just run some plates through, please, in the view to this vehicle. <laughs> when you're dealing with groups of people, quite often you will get one or more of the group will, will try and distract you by either running off or playing up or ca just causing a nuisance to take your attention away from what is actually happening. And if you're outnumbered, it's very difficult, because people are quite switched on. So you have got to be eyes about, really, when, when you're dealing with, uh, with more than one person. Eyes about tonight is the knife crime team. Ken Tinley is double crewed with Jessica Ashford, who's on attachment. They're en route to a suspicious motor spotted in North Nottingham. Our plane spotter cars that side of Nottingham now, and they're, uh, they're just observing a vehicle that's parked in a dead end cul de sac near to one of the, uh, the locations where we've had these recent tensions. So, uh, and they've just got some concerns about a particular car that's um, occupied, but something doesn't feel right about it. So, we're just going to assist them. When interceptors send something's wrong, it usually is. See if I can catch him up, because I think Gav's going to want to go for the stop on the vehicle in a second. The suspect car is on the move, with Gav Hall on its tail. Yeah, we're going to be going right, 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 Hucknall Lane, general direction, Hucknall. I've got to stop him. Gav hits the blues and gives a blast of the twos. He is not stopping. It's looking iffier by the minute. He's stalling us for time. I'd say they're probably concealing. Gav suspects they're trying to quickly hide something. We'll play it dumb till you get here. Ken and Jessica are soon on scene, along with other members of the knife crime team. There are four people in the car and things already smell dodgy. I see you've got your spliff on the go. Just chuck it in there for me and I'll sort it in there, I'll sort that out. Just jump out of the car for me. Two of the lads have coughed up to carrying cannabis. I've got some weed on. If it's just cannabis, mate, I'm not... I've got to deal with it, but I'm not concerned about cannabis. While Ken deals with one of the passengers, Jessica has her hands full with another. So the vehicle smells of drugs, doesn't it? Yeah, so it smells, it's weird, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. There's weed in there, there's weed in there. Yeah, well, that's fine. I'm telling you, what are you being like that for? It's annoying, man. I haven't it's smoked. Annoying. This is it's the first annoying. time. This is it's a annoying. I'm, listen, listen to me. It's annoying. It's a difficult period right now. My friend just died. We're going to go visit his mum. Like, just, just allow it. Yeah, and I just understand that. But just you, allow it. Gonna, come, no. If you want to come and get the weed, come and get yeah. the weed, innit? You're going to be searched, OK? You're going to be searched. Yeah, cool search, man. His mum. Like, just... The bloke's increasingly agitated, and the knife crime team sergeant Matt Daly steps in to lend support. Okay, you're gonna yeah, be cool, search, search man. Right. Search me, I've got weed on me. Search me, search right. me. Look, stop searching me. Stop like that. Bro, you're, you're pissing me off, man. Search okay, me, bro. Okay, just search me, bro. Do your you. thing, do your thing, bro. Search me, bro. Yep, didn't it? Search me, bro. Once coughed, Matt grants him his wish. So did you say you've got something on? I've got weed on me. Just search me. It's in my pocket. Search me. It's right there, bro. Right there, bro. Let's start with that. As the search continues, one of the lads suddenly kicks off with Dan Mottishaw. What? Why am I giving you such a good point for no reason, bro? Go see my friend's mum, Jake. Get back! What the f are you doing, bro? Get back! 
With an angry man aggressively approaching, Dan had no option but to shove him away. And it's all kicking off. What are you doing that, you dickhead? What are you doing now? What are you doing now? Who's a dickhead? My man over there. My, 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 it's my brother. He needs to chill out, isn't he? This is like, 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 oh my God. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I was talking to this That's guy. That's weird. I'm so You've seen what he's done, though. You've seen what he's done, though. Seen what he done, though. Why did he push him? Did he see nothing? Like, what's going on? I don't, I don't understand what's happening you're here. You're a waste, man. You're a dickhead. Okay, let me back these up. If it's just a bit of weed, their behaviour seems way over the top. This, this feels like a, a, an act. I think there's something else around here somewhere. Ken's been on the force for over nine years. Experience tells him something else is at play here. Well, we've got people getting very agitated. And what concerns me is this is, might be some sort of ploy to stop us from finding something, to attract our attention from something else. Look at me, look at me, don't look at my car type scenario. So we just need to try and take our time, get the car searched thoroughly. And, uh, and, it, and it may well be it's just a bit of cannabis, but I don't know, it's a bit on edge at the minute. As suspected, there's a reason these guys kicked off, and it's in their car. So there's been a quantity of cannabis found in the vehicle. Um, there appears to be a burner phone, which has loaded up with deeper content. There's cannabis concealed in different compartments of the car, such as in a shoebox inside a shoe. They've also discovered scales and cash. You're under arrest and suspicion of possessing cannabis with intent to supply it. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm the defence. Don't mention your question, something which later ran in court. Despite the passengers' distraction tactics, the team has come up trumps. We're quite fortunate on the knife crime team that we get to operate in groups of sort of five, six, seven officers. More often than not, this car would have been pulled by probably a response cop on his own or maybe if they're lucky, double crewed. And if you've got sort of four verbally agitated, aggressive males, you know, not, not threatening violence but just bouncing around, you, portraying that they could get aggressive. More often than not, I think sometimes it deters officers from doing a more thorough search. Matt suspects a bigger motive for their roadside pantomime. If they haven't taken the time to hide these in the 300 metres they've driven, yeah. failing to stop, they had something more urgent to hide, didn't they? I suspect we'll find probably Class A in their pants. Yeah. The lads are off to the nick for a strip search. Get you inside and then we'll get you handled with stuff. So, so this, uh, this individual is the driver of a motor vehicle, uh, stopped on Hucknall Lane. He was one of four occupants detained for a stop search under the Misuse of Drugs Act. While Ken and Jessica deal with the driver, their colleagues have searched the passengers and their suspicions seem to have been confirmed. A strip search has just took place downstairs and there's a load of class A. The two passengers who kicked off both had items concealed in their pants. One with suspected heroin and another was cautioned for an ounce of weed. The investigation into the suspected Class A's continues. It's Soapy Sunday. <laughs> Most interceptors are petrol heads who take pride in their wheels. Oh, my aunt's killing me. They've some lovely looking motors in the fleet. But none sound quite as good as the Skoda VRS. 242 horses, 0 to 60 in just over six seconds. Top end of 155. And wheels of choice for Gen Else and Police Dog Quantum. <laughs> who are racing to rendezvous with a pair of Mark V Series Beamers. A two-two round with the units now. They're after a Merc that's been hired and not returned. It's a blue convertible Mercedes C200. Basically, I'd reports of a Mercedes that's been uh, taken out by fraudulent means. 
uh, a brand new one that's heading north. The plan is to stop the Merc using tactical pursuit and containment. Boxing it in with multiple cars. I can use the three TPAC compliant cars for the uh, preemptive box that I'm assuming will be employing on the A1. I've got the TPAC team over there, two cars. I think we've got another car somewhere else than us, and then the other dog handler as well. Jen's a TPAC train driver herself, but she's here to provide backup in case the driver bails out. And we'll be at the back as a flight risk, so uh, if they're going to run off. Lane two, we're the northbound. Off slip, off slip, off yeah. The Merc is up ahead on the A1, so three performance cars roll out with a roar. I think Mark might be behind us. The suspected stolen Merc is a mile ahead with an unmarked unit on its tail. The team makes short work of that mile. And Jen has a ringside seat for the boxing. One car gets in front, one at the side, one at the rear. Wait, wait. All the guy needs to do is slow down, but he panics, slams on the anchors in the middle of lane two, giving the back unit no choice but to rear end the Merc. But it's a successful stop. Quantum is chomping at the bit. But the driver of the Merc, allegedly hired through fraudulent means, is already in cuffs. There's no full license in his fetching man bag nor indeed on the DVLA database, because he hasn't passed his test. Which might explain why he stomped on the brakes and caused an accident. Lewis, can you drive this car? Yeah. I want to clear the carriageway so we can search it. We'll just clear the carriageway then, we'll take him and his car to the lay right, Yeah. and we'll get some search oh, yeah. Toby, stick him in here. Yep. Stand up for me. Oh, I'll come to this police car. We've got it stopped, we've got him out. No injuries to him, no injuries to us. Bit of damage to the police car, but that can go in the garage, can't it? Despite being almost new, the hire car is in a right state. Fag burns in it now, it's a bit, bit of a nail inside. You wouldn't be happy, would you? Cops suspect it's being used as a pool car, a motor shared between criminals. This is just being handed around, I think. I'm not even convinced he's the original hire. Pool cars are normally old bangers, while this 40 grand Merc has been abused to the point where it looks like one. Yeah, it's a bit of a shed. For car loving coppers, this is criminal. That's a 69 plate convertible Mercedes. They literally just don't care, do they? Because that's obviously going to cost the rental company a lot of money. It won't be cheap to get the 5 Series fixed either. Is there a lot of damage or...? Yeah. Oh, is there? Yeah, a lot of money to fix. The man who slammed on his brakes on the A1 was not connected with the fraudulent hire of the Merc and no further action was taken regarding theft. He was, however, convicted of driving without a full licence and driving without insurance. He got eight points plus fines and charges totalling £154. Still to come. Please! Not so grand designs in the world's worst makeover show. There's no way the landlord will know about this, and these people have just destroyed his house. And Greg and Carl ask the tough questions. He's insured it to somebody else to make it cheaper, I and mean, oh, that's yeah. what he's done. That's what you've done, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Cannabis farms in the region are on the rise. These plants are probably six foot tall. With knots interceptors seizing greenery for domestic setups. 
Uh, it was approximately, I believe, it was about 18 plants in here. Right through to industrial operations. It's uh, overwhelming, the smell. You wouldn't want to be working in here for too long. And a favourite setup for organised cannabis dealers is in rented accommodation. For a full scale operation, it needs a lot of space. And what criminals, what they don't want to do, is to have a cannabis farm in their own home. So, a tactic they'll regularly employ is they will rent a property. Um, sometimes they'll do it under a pseudonym so they, they can, it can't be traced back to them. Um, they'll go under the guise of it being a genuine rental, that there's going to be a, a family home. But what they'll actually do is turn the whole property into a, uh, a cannabis factory. Every square inch that they can use to grow cannabis, they will use. And because it's not their property, they're not bothered about the amount of damage that's caused. Acting on a tip-off from a member of the public, officers Lee Frith and Lewis Marshall are racing to a suspected cannabis farm on a housing estate in Aspley. So there's a suspected cannabis grow being dismantled. Uh, there's a van been reversed up to the door um, and it smells like cannabis. So someone's reported it. So there's numerous cars going there to see if we can intercept a van. They hope to catch the farmer with his crop, which calls for a swift entrance. The boys have the big red key and need to get their sharpish. Left, and then the premises is there on the left. It's like the car park at Bridewell, Nick. There are lots of police officers. The suspected farmer's van is still outside. And it looks like they've been expecting unwanted visitors. It's a camera there pointing at everyone. The windows are covered up and there's no answer from inside. However, the interceptors believe someone's home. It looks like there's a light on in there. We, we've got enforced around Hooli and, and Ripsaw and everything. So we're just getting out now. Nice. Lee's an operational firearms commander but it's his method of entry skills that are needed tonight. This back door's useless, so you better with just a red key. What is it? What is it? Yeah, it's just rubbish. Want to go down? Eh? Hey? Uh, I have to go down. Lewis is itching to take the door down, but first they need the green light from control. So at the moment, we're all waiting around with the containment on, waiting to see if we've got the power of entry. And if we've got that power venter, we're just going to bosh the door in. 251 says they believe there's cannabis growing there based on information. Right, cool. That's what I just said. Bosh the door in, permission is granted. One door down, one to go. If you're going to try and put that panel in. Yeah, quite a nice Yeah, yeah, it will. Please! There's two blokes inside the property. <laughs> round the front, round the front. Please, stay where you are. Police officers, make yourself known. The occupants try to scarper through the windows. Yeah, we've got the one round the back. But with the coppers in these numbers, chances of escape are zero. Got them both? Yeah, there's one round the back, one on the front, isn't there? Two men in cuffs. <laughs> Both men are nicked, and it's soon clear why they jumped out of the window. Bingo. The whole of this rented house has been converted into a cannabis factory. It's a bad day for someone. 50, 60 plants in here. Same in the other rooms. So, quite a good job. And it's burning me head. There's weed growing in every single nook and cranny. This is the staircase coming up, which is all covered by the tarpaulins, but even they've even put a shelf above the top where they've got a little nursery growing. Total use of space. There's no way the landlord will know about this, so this is someone that's just renting the property and these people have just destroyed his house. It looks like the interceptors have taken out a seriously organised operation. So they've converted the front room into another room, coming through into the kitchen 
So we've got pipes going in to create the water, and then this is the ventilation to try and get air circulating through the house. Just destroyed someone's house. It's a sophisticated setup, producing an estimated six figure sum of cannabis. It'll be gangs, and these people that we've caught will probably be paid not very much money at all to live here, and just literally their whole life is just looking after these cannabis farms. It's not even a proper bed, look, they've literally squashed it in, a couple of pieces of wood, a mattress, living in there, making as much room as possible for the cannabis. They've very kindly labelled all the rooms for us, though. And there's a room reserved for the green-fingered suspects, with bars in it. Three men were found guilty of producing cannabis and sent down for nine months, eight months and five months, respectively. At least they'll have beds there. It's estimated there are one million uninsured drivers on UK roads. So when did you make the insurance out? I want to make tonight, to make somebody to make the insurance tonight. So you haven't made insurance yet? No, yet. And folks not doing the right thing is wronging everyone else on the road. Well, I'm not doing nothing wrong, sir. Well, you are, you've got insurance. The more people have got their insurance, the more yours, mine, everybody's premium goes up. I mean, the reasons for it is probably vast. I mean, some people generally probably just can't afford it. They'll be knocking around some old banger of a motor and just they've bought a car for a few hundred quid and it's going to cost them four times that to insure it. Might be a reason they can't get insurance because like, it's, they might have 12 points on their licence. They might be banned, which means they're not going to get insured. Or if they do get an insurance quote, they'll be, they'll be quoted thousands to insure a car that's worth a few hundred quid. So they're not going to bother, are they? And then they'll just wing it and hopefully they won't get caught. Hoping they will get caught tonight are interceptors Carl and, at the wheel, Greg. They've plucked a couple of young lads in a Vauxhall Vectra. Uh, Vauxhall Vectra insured for Richard Wright at Newcastle, Staffordshire. Well, Richard Wright's born 57, so that is him. The main policy holder is a man approaching his 70s. But this driver looks like a spring chicken. Time to ruffle some feathers. Carl takes the lead. Is it your car? Yes, it's my car. Who's it insured to? Me. And? And uh, I've got a picture with you. Who else is it insured to? I've got a picture with you. I'm a, I'm, a, uh, me, I'm a third driver, and then there's a second driver. The man claims to be a named driver on someone else's insurance so they need to find out who holds the main policy. Who's the second driver? My cousin. Who's that? Yeah, I'm going to kill you because his name is uh, Adam. Yeah. But he got a second name. We, we so how do you not know his on. name? His Polish name is Adam. That's what we well, call what's him. his real name then, like, on the insurance policy? Uh, I'm not sure. Chris, how, how, do you, how do you not know if it's your cousin? It is my cousin. All right. Jump out. No problem. The driver doesn't seem to know his cousin from Adam. Hello. Hello, hello. How old's Adam? I'm 25, 26. He's 25, 26? Right. The person on this insurance policy is not 23 or 24. I don't know, he's like in his 50s, like 25, 26. Right. It's not true, though, is it? It is true. I'm not gonna... It's not. Time for some fishing. Are you known to the police at all? Yeah, I've been here. You've been arrested? Yeah. What for? because I was driving with no insurance. Oh. The bloke has previous for no insurance, and Carl thinks he's caught him hook, line and sinker. He's insured it to somebody else to make it cheaper, and oh, that's yeah. what he's done. That's what you've done, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's a common scam. Take out a policy under a random name to keep down your premium. But Carl's wriggling fish insists cousin Adam is legit. And what's his name? Adam. What's his surname? Right. Mate, you're lying. Don't keep lying because you'll really start to annoy me. Where does your where does your cousin live? Uh, not in London. Pardon? Nottingham. Hmm. No, he doesn't. 
Yeah, he lives like he's from Nottingham, but he lives like in Leeds. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Keep trying. Greg's seen it all before. You're not the first person today, never mind this week, never mind in all the years I've been doing this, who have tried to pull this one on the insurance. We know what you're doing. Everybody does it and they do it all the time. You don't know this person who is named on the insurance. You're not even saying his name right. He is 70 years old, 70. 70? Yeah. And he doesn't live in any of the places that you've said. So this insurance was taken out, what, a week ago? You've done it under a false address and you've put this other person down who doesn't exist and you're 70 years old and you've done it to get your insurance premiums lower. You, everyone's doing it all the time, we're not stupid. It's shown you are insured on the car but only by way of fraud because you don't even know this other person who's the policy holder. This ruse is going to cost the lad a lot more than he saved. There's no point in lying about it because you're just going to be worse off. Now you, we're going to seize your car, you're going to get six points on your licence and you're going to have to pay to get the car back. So you're taking my car? Yeah. And you, you know you just don't want to tell us and you're lying about it. And that's what's making me even more annoyed. If you just be honest, then we can sort it out. I am honest. Man. You're not. Good cop's not working. Time for bad cop. I'll tell you what, then, I think what we'll do, right, is because you're lying to us, what we'll do is we'll arrest you, we're going to take you down to the police station. Should we play it that way? No, no. Or do you want to be, George, you want to be honest with us about your insurance? No. What? I am honest. So what have you done about your insurance, then? So I am honest. I haven't done this situation with my cousin to insurance for me. Right. Right, you're under, no, we're going to arrest you and take you down to the station. We've had enough of you. Greg's feeling generous and gives him one last chance. Adam Wright doesn't exist, does he? Adam Wright? Yeah. You haven't got a cousin called Adam Wright, have you? No. So you've been lying to us? Yeah. Would you Adam and Eve it? So you don't know Richard Wright, who's 70 years old, who lives in Stoke-on-Trent? He doesn't... No. So what's going to happen is... You're going to, we're going to take the car off you and we'll, uh, we're, you're going to be reported to court for driving with no insurance. Which means it's an alternative means of transport for the lad and his passenger. You are walking, yeah. Why are we walking? It's cold, isn't it? What? Cold. We are lifting your <laughs> There's no room. Oh, there's a plenty of... There isn't, there's no room. I can't fit in the boot. <laughs> you can't. Well, where are we going to find the car then? It's another uninsured driver off the roads with the boys eventually squeezing out the truth. We get lied to constantly, and we can, uh, can normally tell when someone's lying to us, which was the case here. Uh, he thought he was going to get away with it, but um, fortunate for him, we knew he was lying to us, and we got to the bottom of it in the end. The bloke was found guilty of driving without insurance and fined £660. Still to come... Did you pay? Total recall for a bloke suspected of nicking some gas. I forgot. You yes, forgot to I pay. Forgot. Here we go. Oh dear. Ah, that's why. It's been a quiet day for interceptors Jim and Danielle, but they're hoping for a change of pace. The big job's not happened yet. I feel like it's just around the corner. Go and find some car chases, is what I'm after. A job comes in. Could this be the epic pursuit Jim's pining for? It's the uh, Leon that's done the 22 quid's worth of gas theft. Not exactly the heist of the century. It's done Gregory Boulevard, eastbound. Mm-hmm. But the suspect vehicle is on the move. We are not far away. They pick up the Seat with another unit already behind. To the Sierra Kilo Mobile, we're going to be directly behind you now. Are you T Pack? Thank you. Yeah, two and H. We'll wait for the other T Pack resources to join us. 
Jim once wrestled and disarmed a bloke with a gun. But this is his first 20 quid gas robbery. And it's left, left, left onto Broxtow Street. Normal road speeds. The gas man's clocked the cops. He is well aware of it. Yeah, I received. Can you see one occupant. That's a one adult male, and we are right, right onto Woodville Road. But rather than hit the gas, he's pootling round the block with a convoy of cops on his tail. I, I don't think he's going to go. The vehicle's only travelling at one zero, maybe looking for an opportunity to come to a natural. Sorry, Jim, but it's more of a driving Miss Daisy affair. And he is left, left, left. And with the T-Pack mobiles, we can take it from you if you want from the secure kilo. And we left left Melrose Street, and it's three T-Pack mobiles with the subject vehicle now. With a trio of highly trained drivers in his rear view, the gas man makes the right choice. Looks like he's going to come to a natural to the near side team. If you want to strike here, just wrap round it. To an H, vehicle is stopped. No vehicle damage, no contact. They're taking no chances. He's going straight into cuffs. One driver out and detained. No other occupants in the vehicle. Is it your car? Yes. Your car. How long have you been in it? Have been, been in it? Have you been driving it around today? Today? Uh, one hour. An hour or so. We've had a report. This vehicle has been seen potentially committing a theft. Stolen some items from a, uh, like a gas shop in Nottingham about an hour ago. And the vehicle that we suspect is involved is this vehicle here. And that's your vehicle, you were driving it, it belongs to you. So that's why we've stopped you. Uh-huh. OK? All right. The man's English isn't brilliant, but he's got questions to answer. Where have you been today? Where did you go? Flogas. You've been to Flogas? Yes. Uh, wh why? I'm thank uh, the gas. To get some gas? Uh, did you pay? The pennies finally dropped, but not, it seems, in the shop's till. I forgot. You yes, forgot to I'm pay. Here we go. Oh, dear. Ah, uh, that's why. You forgot. Is that... I'm half cart and everything. Is that some kind mm. of admission? But Is, I... yes. You might have forgot, forgot to pay for your gas. gas. Yeah. Did oh. you forget, though? Easily done. Easily done, mate. Yes. Wow. Not good, is it? Danielle isn't entirely convinced. Why did, when police cars behind you, why did you then go a very strange route? I think about oh. I could and I forgot I'm a regular time. Oh. I think somebody knew and thought they might get away with it. It is my fault. Yeah. He claims he was looking for a parking space to visit the hairdresser and Jim's giving him the benefit of the doubt. What we'll do, mate, is we will speak to the company that are 20 quid down for their gas. Yes. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll make an arrangement for you to go and pay them for that money. Okay. I don't think there's any necessity here to arrest you or take you to a police station. It's really low value, isn't it? Mr Forgetful hasn't forgotten about his barber's appointment, though. I'm just quickly uh, changing change my appointment and uh, hire a dresser and I'm going away. I think if you, yeah, I think, I, I think if you go get your hair cut and then do it, that's fine. As long as it's done today. Are you sure? Yes. As long as you go do it and don't do it again. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah. First time I do that. Mm. And with five firearms officers in attendance, it'll probably be the last time. Sorry. Mm. Right. I think about the hair cut. <laughs> Which one open? Jim cuts to the point. We know who you are, we know where you live, we know what car you drive. Make sure you pay that money back or else we'll come and knock on your door and it might become a little bit more serious for you. All right. OK? Uh, yes. But thanks for being cooperative about it. The forgetful gas man was true to his word and paid up later that day. No further action was taken. Not Nottinghamshire's most wanted after all, I'm afraid, but there you go. Still a job done, isn't it? And uh, happy days, really.
Brand new on Monday night at nine here on Channel 5. Police, Night Shift 999. Next night, brand new, The Murder of Holly and Jessica. Stay with us. Oh, police! Come to the door. You come to no harm. Shots fired. Crime never sleeps. But neither... Police officer with the taser! ...do the cops. Battling on the front line... Get on the floor! Get on the floor now! ...are Nottinghamshire's finest. Highly trained pursuit drivers... Oh, oh God. Vehicle failing to stop. ...specialists in entry and search. Oh, my word. There is multi-kilos of cannabis in here. Rapid response firearms officers. Oh, my! That's what you see him now! He's on street! And the crime stopping force of the dog unit. Wherever the battle takes them, on the ground. they'll never back down. Stay, 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 stay. Because come at the hour, yeah, Zulu 2, we're underneath you now, Empire. Come at the interceptors. Put it this way, mate, you level that gun at us, you would have got shot. Coming up. There it is. Night versus Taser in the dead of night. Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Don't where you are holding! A cross-country bike gang caused chaos in Nottingham. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And a suspected dealer <laughs> with a bra load of bad news. Yeah, there's someone with a big knife, they've got a sword, I think it's a machete. If you're a firearms cop, armed bad guys and life-threatening situations go with the territory. You're exactly as I say. Yes. yes. I can't Who's got a knife in here? But they've the equipment and the training... Safety arm. ...to cope with anything that's thrown at them. Keep your hands up! On the floor! And an increasingly used tool in their kit bag. Right, put your hands on that railing now. Put your hands on the railing. It's the taser. Put your hands on the railing put your now. Hands on the railing. Put your hands on the railing. Get your hands on the railing. Do as you're told. I think the taser is very effective because for the armed police inside of things, it's um, a less lethal option that we have. It gives us the chance to maintain distance from someone. So a lot of the times, just having it there and people seeing the bright yellow is enough as a, of a deterrent in itself. Um, and then pointing it at someone is enough to actually de-escalate and bring the situation to a resolve. So it's very rarely fired. But that rare occasion may just be tonight. The, uh, the caller said the person attacked him has just left a voicemail saying he's going to stab the caller and was making threats to attend that male's address uh, with a knife. The police have received a chilling call about a bloke suspected of making his way to another man's house armed with a knife. Firearms heavyweights Jim Campin and Dan Machin are racing to the address. It seems the two men were involved in a fight earlier. Clearly two people have fallen out. Um, lots of mentions of knives. Just for insight, the taser has been authorised, should have been needed. Dan's been awarded three bravery commendations and is highly trained in firearms, taser and in close protection. Basically, if the situation gets sticky, he's the bloke you want by your side. Just further from 5-6, we are some way away. Is anyone uh, close to Chapman as well? Jim and Dan are a few miles out. The dogman Mark Haywood has spotted the suspect in his car and tried to pull him over. He's ignored the blues and makes off. Just approaching Town Hall and the lights are still out. Lights are on red, stand by. Straight through, red. Stand by, it's not the first. 
The driver's gone lights out and heads over into the cycle lane. Fortunately, there's no one on a 2 a.m. bike ride. The suspect now floors it. Still on ring road. Eight zero. Light just fell out. It's come from that house. It's come out there at speed. They think the man could be armed with a knife, so the interceptors need to be prepared should they confront him. But the suspect seems desperate to avoid a meeting. We are Radford Bridge Road. Radford Bridge Road is a dead end. Hey, she's got a car going up Beachdale. It's a dead end in the alleyway at the bottom. Yep, we're there, we're heading out. Jim and Dan are closing in from the other side. But it looks like this potentially armed suspect is preparing for a decamp. Mark moves to block him in, but he's off down an underpass, heading straight for Jim and Dan at the other end. We're at that underpass. They spot the suspect approaching fast. There he is. And the knife is in his hand. Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Interceptors are after a man who's armed with a knife. He's come from the house. Come out there and speak. The suspect's tried to escape, but he's gone down a dead end. Decamped and fled down an underpass. Heading straight for Jim Campin and Dan Machin. We're at that underpass. Who are ready to pounce. There it is. The suspect has a knife, so Dan's drawn his taser. Stay where you are! Don't Stay where you are! Don't Stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Go where you hold it! Taser, taser, taser! Get on the floor! Taser, Get taser, the floor. taser! He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him a little. 50,000 volts has dropped him like a stone. Right, relax. Put your hands behind your back now. Put your hands behind your back now! He's going straight into cuffs. Put your hands behind your back. Male tasered is in possession of a knife. Easy cuff. <sighs> no longer a threat, concerns turn to his well-being. Knees up. Listen, calm yourself down now. And just take some breaths, mate. Take some breaths. Let's sit you up, mate. OK. Here we go. Mate, I'm looking for injuries about your person, OK? He seems to be intact. And so does Jim, all thanks to his partner's quick reactions and sharpshooting. Yep. Stay where you are! Don't stay where you are! Don't stay where you are now! Stay where you are! The bloke's clearly armed with a blade and heading straight for Jim. Go where you hold it! Leaving Dan no option but to shock him into submission. Taser, taser, taser! Ah. He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him a little. In the heat of the moment, the suspect has thrown the blade. But it doesn't take long to locate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's not me far away. So you've got one, Jim? Yeah, a little kitchen knife. It might be little, but with 275 murders involving a knife or sharp instrument recorded in England and Wales last year, Dan was wise to act fast and stop him in his tracks. And it's not the only blade in his possession. Oh, there's another. It's what? It's my mum's kitchen knife. It's what? It's my mum's kitchen knife. Your mum's kitchen knife. His mum's kitchen knife belongs in her kitchen, not in his pocket. The slurry bloke also stinks of booze. I don't know. Have you been drinking, mate? Yeah, of course not. Yeah? OK, shall we get in a police car? We've got to do things now the right way. Mate, you can suck your teeth and disrespect me all you like. No, mate, sucking your teeth. It's about as childish as it comes, mate. The suspect's going to have to stop sucking and start blowing. Uh, you're going to breathalyse, OK? No? OK, I require you to provide a sample of breath for analysis. Big deep, listen to me. Big deep breath. I like that one. I don't want to do it. You don't want to? OK. That don't like you, man, like you don't like me. OK, I've got to... I'm telling you, fuck. It's another person against you. I'm telling you, mate. Personal issues or no personal issues. Listen to what I'm saying. 
Are no, you, do you want to provide a sample of breath? Boss man. Boss man. Do you want to provide a sample of breath? Stupid me. I know you're not. Yeah. That's why I'm asking you. Do you want to provide a sample of breath for analysis? No, I don't. Okay, that's refusing then. You're yeah. further arrested for failing to provide a sample no, no, of breath. No, no, come on, come on. Bring it. Oh, you want to? The charmers had a change of heart. Bring it, bring it, bring Last it. chance. Big deep, deep breath. breath. Keep going. And the verdict's in. in. We're on 89. Legal limit is 35. So that's almost two and a half times the legal limit. Looking at the state of his car, his blood alcohol levels could still be rising. The suspect's off to blow on the evidential breath machine at the station. And any time the taser is discharged, the interceptors need to carefully gather their own evidence. So we're just recovering the taser bits and pieces. Um, this is now all part of evidence. And if there's any repercussions or anything that comes if he suddenly collapses and dies, then obviously this is part of the evidence that might go towards that investigation. But it's a matter of course, we just have to do it. Once bagged, the dynamic duo have time to reflect on their shocking drama. The first taser's not really had a massive effect on him, has it? Taser, taser, taser! Ah, He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him. Nick. That's no, when go, I've go, got go. him in headlock and you've tasered him again. But the taser's done its job and no one's been seriously hurt. Jim's not seen the knife and he's running straight towards Jim. Um, so he's been tasered. Uh, Jim's grabbed hold of him anyway. Uh, he's been still struggling around, so he's been tasered again. I thought he was still in possession of the knife whilst Jim's struggling with him. Uh, got a bit of concern Jim might get, uh, get stabbed us or something and come off worse. Uh, so he's been tasered. And we do loads of training, but you can never train for the real thing when you've got someone running towards you in possession of a knife. Um, wide open eyes, clearly intent on getting past you, still in possession of the knife. Uh, you think back, you, th you should have shot a knife, should have told Jim about the knife. But in the heat of the moment, you know, day of the races, you can't, you can't prepare for that kind of thing. Um, it's ended well, Jim's got no holes in him and uh, we've got one in our custody. So it's, um, it's a good, good result. Yeah, good result. The suspect blew an even higher reading of 116 at custody. For drink driving, dangerous driving, and possession of an offensive weapon, he got a 10 month prison sentence suspended for a year. Now. There's been a spate of quad and motorbike incidents in Nottinghamshire, with antisocial riders tearing up the streets. Vehicles still failing stop. And these nimble but potentially dangerous vehicles cause the interceptors a headache. They can get away around fields, they can get in areas that we can't. Think about the size of it. Yeah, the size, the land. Speed. A lot of them have been riding motorbikes and quads all their lives as well. So in terms of skill set, there's a lot of them that um, they'll take more risk as well on it, on a quad. Um, to get away, which makes it even more dangerous for us in terms of obviously uh, trying to, to police it. And when they come in numbers the chaos only multiplies. A biker gang from Coventry has traveled the 50 miles up to Nottingham, bringing them onto the interceptors patch. There's around 25 motorbikes and a couple of quads, riding on the wrong side of the road, nearly knocking over pedestrians and putting lives at risk. They might not be the Hell's Angels, but this band of bikers are proving devilishly hard to catch on the ground. The traffic unit is behind one, but the biker presses home his advantage and mounts the pavement. The off-roader soon gives them the slip down a narrow path. Bikes have advantages over bigger, heavier cop cars, but not when it comes to their fuel tanks. 
the entire gang descends on a service station. It's a chance to apprehend a couple of them. N-Pass guides a marked unit in. But as cops leap out, the gang scatters in all directions. They're now travelling at speed, the wrong way around a major junction. It's only a matter of time before someone is seriously hurt. And their driving is becoming more reckless by the minute. Thank you, thank you. It's going to take a team effort to get them stopped, and interceptor units across the county, including Jen Els, are closing in. What exactly have they done? But the gang are leaving the city to escape to the country. And it doesn't look like they've come for a picnic. Having torn up the city streets, they're now ploughing up the farmers' crops. With the bikers gathered in a field, the cops hatch a plan to cut them down by surrounding the perimeter. As darkness falls, Jen arrives on scene and gets an update from Lisa DeSantis. Man is, we're hoping that we'll kind of make them try and get out and yeah. ultimately into the path of stingers. Yeah. The plan is to push the gang towards the main exit to the field, where they'll be greeted by a set of tyre-ripping teeth. Yeah. We're hoping they're going to go that way. There's loads of stingers and cops down there. Specialist dog handler Jen's got her own set of mobile gnashes in the car in the form of Quantum. Right. The perfect sheepdog to herd this dodgy flock from the field. Literally going to be going around Nottingham City Centre causing absolute bedlam. Entrance into the field. Oh, yeah. Just also uh, narrow their vision down. I think they've been looking at ways to get out, um, but they're very limited because we're everywhere. We're going to hopefully flush them towards the stingers, but they're literally just on in this uh, line. Pull the dog officer and then you'll spring round on top of them. Um, so where dogs go in, follow them. At the first sign of quantum, the gang saddles up. Okay. The plan seems to be working. The bikes are herded towards the stingers. The fleeing flock spots the spikes and takes flight. They spotted a gap in the hedgerow and managed to squeeze through. They might have slipped the net for now, but they can't escape the eye in the sky. They're, uh, they're stuck in the fields, uh, trying to find a way out. As the gang struggle to exit the maze of fields, Lisa and Jen find something they've left behind. Nice. Is this tree? Oh, they've left a bag as well. Petrol can. But there's no rest for the team as Enpass update the gang's location. The main group are going to come out on the narrow lane New Road. That's down there. They're coming the, out uh, on there. Next couple of seconds and head down towards the uh, M1 full bridge. The gang are heading back in their direction, and it's a race to intercept. That's 2-2, two -two. we're back in the car, heading towards them. They're, uh, they're going across the field, back towards Carp Forest. Jen arrives at Carp Forest, hoping to land herself a prize catch. And H, we're going to stay at that bridge in case they come back here. The lead quad is heading straight for her. Stay where you are, mate! Stay where you are! They've retreated back into the woods. 
There's no way out and the rider has no choice but to dump his quad, which is swiftly recovered. Cops have also picked off three likely lads nearby. I'm glad that it's on telly. That's all I said. Paul Charlesworth and Rich Elliott join proceedings and find more dumped vehicles in the forest. We must have recovered, what, four or five bikes, if not a couple more. Uh, we've got a couple arrested. With something like this, they, they just cause havoc for everyone else. So chances of you get more slim, but the more we inconvenience them and put them out, the better, the more we cost them. So they've had their fun and now they've lost probably five or six bikes, a couple of them arrested. One of them's crying his eyes out because he's been arrested. Um, because he's been caught being an idiot, so I'm happy with it. It's as good as you can ask for, really. It's a miracle no one was injured in the incident and the interceptors managed to see six bikes and one quad. No one claimed them and they were subsequently crushed. However, due to insufficient evidence, no further action was taken against the three arrested men. Keys. Still to come. One beer and some beer thrown on your top and you'll be sound. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep a dodgy going. driver takes the family out for an evening drink drive. First red mate, it's 52. He failed it. And a massive wedge of cash. Well, that was the most drunk drive. Raises the million dollar question. What's your money for? Latest annual figures estimate 280 people were killed in accidents on Great Britain's roads by drivers under the influence. 51 means you're over the drink drive limit. Chancing it after a few sherbets is a risk you'll live to regret if you're lucky. Sure they're not. Surely yes. I've had two vodka lemonades. Drink driving is a nightmare for anybody yeah. that's on the roads whilst somebody is driving whilst under the influence of alcohol. And I think personally, a lot of the time people do it because they can't be bothered to arrange alternative um, transport to get home. And I think sometimes people think, oh, I'll just risk it. I'll risk it, I'll have a few. But then when you're out with your mates, you have a few more. And then before you know it, you're in a world of drunkness and you still think you're all right to drive home. It's Monday evening, and Sergeant Jim Carrington and Lewis Marshall are after a dodgy driver. We're travelling down towards, back into Nottingham from up north, in company with some other ARVs and a couple of other TPAC call signs from the TSG. Uh, there's a motor down here that's been pinged with a lad in it, been dumped for for dangerous driving, he's currently disqualified, and the suggestion is he's probably in the pub drinking um, and might get back in behind the wheel of this car. The team are out in force. The controller has put preemptive tactics on it uh, to preempt any kind of pursuit. Um, so all the teeth back call signs are travelling that way along with our dog and Legen. Paul, we're going to sit the other side, mate, um, out of view. So we're just short of the RA. I'm happy here. Are you happy here? Yeah. Well happy. Happy hour starts here as Jim and Lewis play the waiting game. While at the pub, Lisa and Paul, in an unmarked, have eyes on the suspect's car. There's someone in the driver's seat of our subject vehicle, according to Lisa and Paul. So stand by, stand by. It looks like the disqualified driver is driving. Right, right, right. Lisa has the suspect car in her sights up ahead. We're with you now. Right. They're ready if the bloke makes off, but he's pulled over. Box on, box on. A passenger is first out of the car. It's all right, it's all right. 
Yeah, cool, cool. Keys. Next out from the passenger side is the driver's two young kids as Jim gets down to business. I'm just going to put you in handcuffs to make sure you're not going to escape, mate. All right. Are oh, you disqualified? <laughs> he denies being disqualified, but Jim's got laptop backup. According to the, the police national computer, you are still shown disqualified until you pass an extended driving test. Have you passed an extended driving test yet? No. So you will almost certainly still be disqualified from driving, mate. Despite being banned... We can deal with it here, mate, all right? Thank you, mate. He's seen fit to drive his young family from the pub. But you'll end up, we'll end up seizing the car because you're disqualified and not insured. And there's something far more worrying on the wind. Have you had a drink at all tonight, mate? Yeah, I've had one. I've had one. OK, mate. We'll just breathalyse and make sure you're not over the drink drive limit either. The bloke reckons the smell of booze is from a spillage on his top. Yeah, oh, you've had some beer thrown yeah, on you. Yeah, yeah. Right, it might be that, mate. I can smell a bit, but yeah. not massive amounts. That's what you can smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has admitted to having one pint at the pub. Right, mate, just a steady blow into the machine for me. Nice and steady. Keep going, 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 keep going. That's it. We'll see what it says. One beer and some beer thrown on your top and you'll be sound. So we'll see what it says. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, it's red, mate. It's 52. You failed it. Um, so the bad news is, is I'm going to have to rest you on the suspicion of being over the drink driving room, mate. All right, and we'll take you into the nick and put you on the big machine down there, and hopefully you'll not blow over the limit down there. If you have only had one beer, mate... Yeah, I've only had one. I'd be surprised, if I'm honest, to blow 52 on one beer. I also have only one beer. Maybe he accidentally spilled some more beer down his neck. Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, unbelievably, he's got... What I'm assuming is his young child in the car and his other half, and he's just blown over the drink drive limit. So not only is he disqualified and uninsured, he's also getting behind the wheel of the car when he's had some alcohol. We're going to get cracking, uh, guys and girls. We'll see you down there. It turns out the bloke's also been convicted of a drink driving offence in the last five years. So it's a familiar room for him. I require you to provide two specimens of the breath for analysis by means of an approved device. This specimen with the lowest proportion of alcohol may be used as evidence and the other will be disregarded. So yeah. deep breath in and then a breath into the machine, mate, when you're ready. Yeah. Keep going, 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 keep going. It's stopped, mate. It's just a it, mate, because you just stopped. You get, you, get, you get another couple of chances, mate, but bear with me. Attempt two. Have another go, mate. Just deep breath in and then steady into the machine. Steady, steady, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. It just stopped, mate. It's because you're hesitating, mate. It's a really yeah, sensitive... I'm, I'm just blowing the pump. I'm just blowing Mate, it's a sensitive machine. Right. It knows when you're hesitating and when you're not. Right. You can't really fool it. You can't beat the machine and the suspect finally manages to give two samples. Keep going and bang on, mate. Take a seat. Anything over 40 will render you liable to a prosecution, so we'll see what it comes up with, mate. All right? Yeah. With his previous disqualification and drink driving conviction, failing this test could mean jail time. So, what he's telling me is he scored 45 and 43. Let's see, we go with the lowest one, mate, which is 43, but unfortunately, you are just over. Does the sergeant know the scores? Sweet. Thank you, mate. Catch you later, Anthony. You're leaving these capable hands here. It's a menace off the road, and the Sarge is left less than impressed. It's unbelievable, really, that people take those risks, especially with children in the car. I mean, as a, as a police officer, it, we see the devastation that it brings when people get behind the wall when they've been drinking. But I'm a father as well and I've got children and there's no way on earth I would ever put my family at that level of risk and get behind the wheel of a car when I've had some alcohol. He'll be sent to court and he'll be looking at a decent ban. The driver had his day in court. He pleaded guilty to drink driving and was sentenced to 12 weeks behind bars, suspended for 12 months. He was also banned from driving for a total of three years. Given this ban, no further action was taken for the other suspected motoring offences. It's an outbound jockey. Paul Charlesworth and Lewis Marshall are racing to catch up to a pursuit across town. End of it, turn right. And it's going to come down to us. The suspect car has apparently failed to stop, collided with other vehicles and ducked into an estate. Yeah, you clear it, go. 
By the time Paul gets them there, another unit stopped the car with a tactical contact and has the driver in cuffs. On your side. In fact, eight coppers are all over him. They need to work out why this bloke apparently failed to stop. And there might be a clue in his man bag. This much wedge arouses Paul's suspicions. So, it's got to be something drugs-related for that sort of passion as he's come out. The lads also wrecked his Beamer in a desperate bid to escape. So they're expecting to find something juicy in the car. But it's clean. <laughs> Time for the million-dollar question. What's, what's the money for? Sorry? What's the money for? It's prop money. Prop money? Yeah. What's that? What does that mean? Prop money, you buy it online, it's fake money. What's fake money? Ah, oh, right. Just to look, look good. <laughs> Turns out this wedge is as much use as Monopoly money. Let's see, look, 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 look. What have you got it for, then? Look, look, look on the front. Just to look flash? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's for the Facebook, is it's it? for that Make Facebook it. photo. Is that, isn't it? Yeah. But a car chase is no game, and the information the police have is that the bloke has no licence or insurance. This whole chase all around this estate uh, driving like an idiot is just because he's got no licence and insurance, which makes it even more stupid, really. Um, because, you know, he's risking people li people's lives just to save, uh, you know, six points and a £200 fine for having no insurance. And he won't be able to use any of that to pay for it. It happens a lot, more often than it should, just because just I think they like the chase. The suspect was refused charge for the no licence and no insurance. He has since failed to appear in court for the charge of dangerous driving and is now a wanted man. It's all well and good buying fake 50s to look flash but some chances try to pass fake prop money as the real deal. And Ken Tinley and Dan Mottishaw of the Knife Crime Team are hunting for lads who may have done just that. So this is a red Audi S3 that's being, in, being linked to a, an incident in Hugdall in Nottingham where some individuals have purchased a PlayStation 5 and they've paid for the uh, the page for the PlayStation 5 and fake notes. Dipped off, he's dipped off. Yeah, Has he? Sure there. The suspect's car has been spotted by another unit nearby. We've just spun round. We're going uh, Radford Road towards Bentinck. Might be off to uh, intercept it. Just coming to a stop at the junction of Maple Street. The Audi's pulled over and Ken and Dan are soon on scene. The driver's taken off the questioning as Ken and colleagues deal with the two passengers. Hello, my man. You OK? Hello, How are we doing? All right? It looks like these are the blokes they're looking for. Oh, is that a PlayStation 5? Yeah. At this point, you've been detained in connection to yeah. a fraud because we think that PlayStation that I'm assuming is in that box there has been purchased for fake notes. So what I'm going to be doing in a minute is searching for evidence of that, OK, under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. The back seat passenger is going into cuffs and Ken gets straight to the point. Is that one? All right, lad. Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah, no, all right. Let's be honest with you. You got any fake notes on you? Ain't daft no, like that? No, no, no. I got real money. I got my real money. You got... If you look in my purse. In here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got like 50 quid. Mm -hmm. No real money, look. It's all real money, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's my money, boss. Sergeant Matt's on scene, but it's not the PS5 he wants to get his hands on, it's some fake currency. Just trying to work out whether these notes are fake or genuine. I mean, these ones, they're either very good fakes. I mean, they appear genuine to me. Um, but that's not to say that we won't find some more fake notes or maybe they've used all the fake notes buying the PlayStations. After a thorough search of the vehicle, Matt hits the jackpot. Just after the uh, 
under the mat in here. Those ones, I think, are real. These ones clearly aren't. It's more of the fake prop money, but this time in 20s. As you can see, they haven't got the transparent panels. They don't even look that good, to be fair. The dodgy notes seem fairly easy to spot. I think what they've done is they've bought, they've um, gone to Gumtree or one of these selling sites and they've gone with a couple of 20s wrapped round a load of fakes, handed them over to the seller, seller's handed over the PlayStation and then it, with, in fairness to the seller, within seconds of them driving off, he's realised he's got a load of fake notes. <laughs> um, but by then, the car's already gone. Thankfully, it's come straight our way. And it's a nice little stop. It's game over as the Toy Money Trio trade PlayStation for Police Station and head for the Nick. It's a good result that we've managed to catch him coming into the city, got the PlayStation 5 back and got some fraudulent notes. So in terms of a starting point for an investigation, we're in a good place. Back at the station, Dan casts an expert eye over the funny money. To look reasonably OK, but when you look here, there's, it says that this is not legal tender, it is used for motion pictures by the look of it. And then on the back, it's uh, pounds, it's spelt ponds. So it's just a, a case of just make sure if you buy anything or sell something for cash, make sure you've got in the real notes and actually have a look at them. And uh, it could just be as simple as it actually says on it, it's not a real note. You don't want a bag full of ponds, do you? The driver was dealt with by way of a simple caution for fraud by false representation. No further action was taken against the two passengers. The PlayStation 5 was returned to its rightful owner. Still to come. Have you got any more on you? Or just, just that's it, is it? Will this suspected dealer have more drugs than she's letting on? I think I just heard some more in there. No, that's just this, this one up. I can hear it some more. If you've got some more, just... There's no, no, there's no more. Across the UK, only one woman for every ten men is prosecuted for drug-related crimes. And when it comes to supply, the interceptors rarely come across female dealers. It's usually um, young males that we find deal drugs. But today, knife crime team members Gav Hall and Dan Mottishaw are after that rarest of suspects. We've got some intelligence that there's a particular person that's involved in drug supply in the Nottinghamshire area. Um, so we know what vehicle that person's driving and we're just monitoring the AMPR to see where the vehicle is. We're thinking that this lady is likely to be dealing cannabis, but then she could be dealing other things, possibly things like MDMA and Xanax. So we're, um, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we uh, get a good result out of it. And Lady Luck's smiling today. Another unit has spotted her. Lane two is going to look like it's going to be right towards the private of the lines. Gav gets his foot down. Yep. We've uh, got eyeball on you now. Yeah, we've got it. It's uh, left to go up towards the castle. They light up the suspect's car, which has a brake light out. Drug dealers often try to conceal their stash when pulled over, so they're onto her within seconds. Hey, I'm love you, all right? Switch car off for us, Ducky. Just come to actually talk about your light, but I can smell, smell a smell of cannabis, so I'm just going to be detained. Yeah. Was he? Yeah. Jump right. for his duck. You're going to be detained for the purpose of a search and the misuse of drugs, Zach, for yourself yeah. and the vehicle, because there's a strong smell of cannabis we got all right, it, coming got it. from it. All right. Just stick it on there for me. She sticks the blame on someone else for the smell of weed, but fesses up to having a small bag of cannabis herself. I'll give you what I've got. I've got one bag of weed. you got whereabouts is that, my love? In my it's in your hand, is it? All right, just keep hold of it in your hand for one second. All right. Yeah. Have you got anything else on you you shouldn't have? No. no. OK, anything the vehicle my colleagues need to be aware of? No. No, sand, all right. Well, chuck us that one bit then. Leaving the rest of the team to search her car, Dan deals with the lady driver. Right, what we'll do is 
I'll just do a very cursory search around you, yeah? then I'll get a female officer to come and just give you a bit more pat down. I don't want to start going up and down your legs and whatnot. All right, Sam. Okay, so anything in your pockets, nothing's going to hurt me at all. Just, just your phone. All right, my love, cheers. I'll just... Their pockets are empty. Sound. And it's a similar story with the car. That comes up on my side. I wonder if she's got it on her, mate. Well, the suspect's got something to get off her chest. I've got a few bags of feet. Yeah? Where, um, where are they, then? They're here. OK, all right, Sam. There's more weed in her bra. OK, all right. OK. I've got a few it's split up into enough bags to suspect she's dealing. So you've got... Yeah, no, I'd rather you be honest with it. Have you got any more on no, you? That's just, just that's it, is it? All I right, OK. I it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that bit in my hand I was just about to put in there. Then I seen the police car and I seen it follow me around. Right, OK. So I got scared, so I hid it straight away there. Dan's an experienced copper who's taser, stinger and pursuit trained. But it's his keen sense of hearing that's come up trumps today. There. Right, OK, have you got some more? Because I think I just heard some more no, in there. No, no, that's just this. This one out. I can hear it small. If you've got some more, just... There's no, no, there's no more. I can, like I can hear, I can hear something rustling. Honestly, they could do a strip search. OK, all right, OK, right. OK. It looks like her wish is going to be granted. She'll go to custody and we'll get some female officers to search her and see if she's got anything else concealed. Carl will go back to one of our police stations for a more thorough search and then we'll take it from there. OK, right, so at this time, you're arrested for possession with intense supply of class B drug named the cannabis, OK? Yeah. Cool, right. Cool. Come this way, up. She's off for a check-in at the Nick. Where are you here for? Uh, Peewitt's cannabis. Dan's no Catholic priest, but this lady can't seem to stop her confessions. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I've got all this. OK, that's fine. That's fine. Just... It's nice class A. There's several bags of what looks like cocaine. At this time, you're further arrested for possession of intense supply. Class A is right. What we'll do is you're still going to have to have that search anyway. Yeah, OK, no, that's fine. Point. All right. Search going to find it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No problems at all. She claims there's no more drugs, but they've heard it all before. She realised she was going to be stripped naked, so I think she's just basically realised that we're going to find it anyway. So if she offers it up now, she probably thinks that she looks a little bit more honest, but we were going to find it anyway. She wasn't so honest to hand it over at the roadside. The lady strip searched and would you believe it? More. Yeah. One she missed. One she missed. <laughs> she, she, thought, she did say to me, I thought I'd give it your. <laughs> I've got that. Brill, thank you very much. It's four deal bags of suspected MDMA to add to the collection. Class A again. Yeah. So we've got cocaine and MDMA. So, sweet. With the drugs already found, they've now grounds to search her house. Are we going to find anything else in there? Indeed, that's it. OK. Oh, some scales that I've got. Yeah. We'll head straight over there now. It's been a good day's work so far. Please with that, mate. Please with that. Yeah, I'm well chuffed. But is it about to get even better? But we've got an authority here to search the house for evidence. It's not long before Sergeant Matt finds the promised weed. So, in fairness, I think she said in custody that we'd find a little bit personal use cannabis. That's exactly what we found. I think there's one, two, three, four pre-rolled spliffs and maybe a gram of cannabis. There's nothing else of interest. However, with the drugs found on her person, it's been a perfect result. And Dan's back at his desk to review the haul. So initially, the female offered up this single bag of cannabis uh, and after speaking to her, she then handed over a, a polythene bag which contained these few deal bags of cannabis. Once she got down to custody, she decided to, again, to be a little bit more honest. And then we got this white powder and these two white rocks from a bag which we potentially believed to be cocaine. And then when she was strip searched, we had these four bags just here, which we, again, potentially think might be MDMA. The suspect is currently awaiting a charging decision for possession with intent to supply Class A and B drugs.
and Police Interceptors is back new next Wednesday at 8. On Friday at 8, we get a taste of real life on board a nuclear submarine, HMS Trenchant, in life under the waves. Next tonight, have you ever heard of house swapping? Well, it's happening all over the country and doesn't cost anything. Brand new council house swap begins in just a month.